battles to save its television plan. I'm Pat O'Brien. I'll have the details and the background on that story. I'm Ralph Arcegui. We'll also have a story about the Elway, Father Jack coaching San Jose State, Son John quarterback Stanton. Today they'll turn what could be a family feud into a loving family affair. everybody, I'm Brent Musburger. Welcome to the NCAA Today. It is a pleasure for CBS to be back with college football after 19 years, and a pleasure to have all of you good friends along the Pacific Network with us for this live broadcast now. And also a pleasure to have this former dashing young halfback from Miami of Ohio went to Northwestern and he led the Wildcats to great glory. And then he moved to South Bend, Indiana. He coached the Fighting Irish for 10 years. What great duels against the Trojans of USC. They're uh, winning a couple of national championships. And uh, look at him being carried off the field there by his charge. He's only put on a pound and a half. Folks, he's in great shape. <laughs> I'll put on more than that. Those were 25 great years. And as I look at those pictures, Brett, why they're physical evidence of the pressures of coaching. <laughs> the one fan, I'll never forget it coming up to you, and he's saying, you know, Coach, Notre Dame and USC, not the same without you on one sideline and John McKay on the other. <laughs> well, I'm glad I'm not on the sideline anymore anyway. Arrow, we, of course, are deep into the afternoon, so we have a lot of scores, and I think we will take everybody to the scoreboard, and the coach has some highlights we can go through. Nebraska warming up for that shootout against Penn State next week, 28 nothing right now at the half over New Mexico State, an easy one. Alabama ahead of Mississippi, 21 to 7. And of course, Bear Bryant simply never loses to one of his former players. Today it is Steve Sloan. Penn State ahead of Rutgers now, 35 to 14. They are in the third quarter of that game. North Carolina suffered a major loss. Kelvin Bryant was hurt in the first half, came back in the second half, tried it, but had to leave the field again. It is 27-10 anyway. The Tar Heels being led by his backup, Ethan Horton, who has had a big afternoon. Ohio State and Michigan State. Right now it is 24-10. They are in the fourth quarter with the Buckeyes ahead in East Lansing. And we have some action of that game. John Leister here handing off to Aaron Roberts, had the Spartans ahead, and then coach Mike Tomzak of the Buckeyes did a job. First start for him for the Buckeyes, and he throws his first career touchdown pass to Gary Williams, who has caught many for Ohio State. Here it is in the left corner. Oh, and here's somebody. This is Zeke the Wonder Dog going deep for the Spartans. All right. <laughs> now, here is a punt to Daryl Dixon, who will fumble it, and the ball is recovered by OSU deep in Michigan State territory. Oh, the kicking game. And then it was Von Brodnack. A big, strong pullback that bust into the end zone. It was close, but they called him in. And Ohio State again ahead in that game by a count of 24 to 10. UCLA and Wisconsin. You in Los Angeles know this story. Terry Donahue simply does not lose to the Badgers. In fact, the school hasn't in 44 years, and the Bruins are having an easy time of it right now. They're cruising 36. That game is at the half. The Hurricanes of Miami, led by Jim Kelly, and they have had a tough battle from Bill Dooley's Virginia Tech team. Now, here's Miami getting in for their first touchdown. Jim Kelly, how does he rate with these other great quarterbacks? I like him. I think he's a Heisman Trophy candidate, and you see why. Here he spins out to the outside and throws the Beretta the tight end for the touchdown. I think it was the second, first touchdown of the game for him. There's Dooley on the sidelines, and then Virginia Tech had a chance to score right here. And watch the Hurricane defense. They stop him right there at the goal line, and that was a big moment in the game. And again, it is 14-0 right now. And we understand, we just have a late report. Jim Kelly has been injured. He has been forced out of that game. We'll find out how serious that is before this broadcast is over. Boston College and Clemson right now. Clemson, the defending national champions. They lead BC 14-7, and this has been a dandy game. Watch Homer Jordan give to Big Chuck McSwain. Well, he came out running today, didn't he? This drive was principally a running drive, and McSwain, here you see why he's a great back. And again, he drives over the left side. Watch the power here and scores the first touchdown for Clemson. How about those shorts, folks? It is warm <laughs> in Clemson. Now, here is a play. That's the first fumble. And here comes the second one. Era, did he cross the goal line? Oh, on we play? Looked, yeah, we looked at it in slow motion, and it was awful close. I thought he was in first, but after I looked at it again, 
judgment call. <laughs> All right, Maryland and West Virginia right now. West Virginia having upset Oklahoma last week. They now lead Maryland, 19-12 is the count. That one is in the fourth period. Illinois with an easy time of it right now against Syracuse. The Illini are ahead of Syracuse, 27-3. They are in the third quarter of that game. Oklahoma snapping back. They are beating Kentucky, 29-8. That game is in the fourth quarter. Minnesota and Purdue, and the Gophers now lead the Boilermakers 22 to 10. That game is in the third quarter. Iowa and Iowa State, they are battling for the bragging rights to all that corn. 7-3, the Hawkeyes with a lead right now. And Kansas and TCU, they are in the third quarter, and Kansas with a big lead. The NCAA Today continues on CBS in just a moment. CAA Today is sponsored by the 1982 Volkswagens. Nothing else is a Volkswagen. And by Burroughs, makers of advanced computer and office automation systems. We just checked on the Miami quarterback, Jim Kelly. He has been taken to the locker room, a bruised throwing arm. We do not know how serious it is. And, of course, Miami leading Virginia Tech by two touchdowns right now. They are in the fourth quarter. Did you know the saddest note of this young season was struck last Saturday when Long Beach State safety Todd Hart suffered a broken neck against UCLA. He was paralyzed from the neck down even after undergoing four hours of surgery on Thursday. But this morning, doctors upgraded his chances of regaining the use of his arms or legs to 20%. Now, I realize those are still long odds, but it is far more optimistic than earlier reports. And all of us at CBS Sports certainly wish Todd the very best. Meanwhile, Washington is rated number one in the nation for the first time ever in the Associated Press poll. They were helped along with a 55 to nothing thrashing of Texas El Paso last week. But Husky coach Don James says the rating does not mean a lot to him right now. The Rose Bowl champions have never been more optimistic. Washington does not have to play USC this year. And they are also blessed with one of the finest coaches in college football. His name, Don James. I think that uh, without a doubt, that uh, of, of the first uh, uh, six games, that there were probably a couple of real critical ones uh, uh, because of the fact they're conference games. And, and I'd say this is definitely one of the two. Uh, precarious being number one in college football. Oh, I know we were named number one a couple of times before the season even started. Didn't like it because they're all shooting at you. Now, what great state university boasts of 10 Nobel Prize winners on its faculty and a varsity football coach who until last week had never coached a game, any level, high school or college? California at Berkeley, that's who. The coach, of course, Joe Cap, that celebrated free spirit who actually was a kind of coach on the field with both California and the Minnesota Vikings. <laughs> And how did Joe do in his debut against Colorado? Well, he turned loose a redshirt sophomore quarterback named Gail Gilbert. Gilbert carved up the Buffaloes 31 to 17. The Golden Bears defense was sharp too. They converted three first half turnovers into touchdowns. But to Coach Cap, it was simply on the job training. The men played a, a five game and I gotta get better, I'll guarantee you that. The players did what they had to do and uh, we're proud of them. Now, this man has not scored a touchdown yet today against Wisconsin, but he broke a 1949 school single-game record by catching four TD passes last week. He is number one on his school's all-time list with 14 career touchdowns. That, of course, is JoJo Townsell of UCLA. JoJo Townsell exploded for the Bruins. And this marks a major change in philosophy for Coach Terry Donahue. Normally, he likes a running attack. But Townsville has changed all that this season. I had no idea, you know, until after the game when the media were telling me all the different records. It was, it was something, I guess, people fantasize about all the time. We are getting ready, of course, for the Stanford-San Jose State game. That is father against son. Bob Murphy and Steve Davis are covering that game for us. So let's go to Bob right now. Okay, Brent, Stanford Stadium is really heating up for the 39th in a series that dates all the way back to the year 1900. The Cardinal of Stanford is 132, the Spartans of San Jose 5. There was one tie, Boomer Sooner, and it was back in 1974, and a guy by the name of Darrell Rogers was coaching San Jose then, and since that time, 
these games have really been competitive. Very competitive, and the reason is basically because of location. They're 20 miles apart. The, both teams have to share the same sports page. Last week in the San Jose paper, it was uh, Stanford on top and then San Jose. And So those young San Jose players are really wanting to gain the, the attention and the publicity just as much as Stanford players. They've got something to prove. And, of course, San Jose derailed Stanford just a year ago, but it's all going to unfold right here. Brent Nara right here in Stanford Stadium. All right, Bob, what a beautiful day for a football game out there. And, of course, Coach Jack Elway of San Jose State matched up against his son, John. We'll have more on that a little bit later. But a federal judge in Oklahoma has handed down a very important ruling that forbids the NCAA to continue its television plan for college football. Now, Pat O'Brien has been covering this story all week, and... Uh, Pat, you have been doing some heavy reading. You're right, Brent. I'm, I'm not the only one, believe me. This 98-page document has been required reading this week across the country for lawyers, network executives, college administrators, and athletic departments. It is a much stronger and far more reaching opinion than anybody expected. And if upheld, college football will never be the same. It was the universities of Oklahoma and Georgia versus the NCAA. The school's challenging the 30-year-old rule that makes the NCAA the sole negotiator for the rights to televise its members' football games. This year, CBS, ABC, and Turner Broadcasting began a new agreement which limits television appearances by member schools to six times each over the next two years. Georgia and Oklahoma argued this was against the Sherman antitrust laws, and U.S. District Judge Juan Bursiaga agreed takes sole authority away from one agent who has claimed the right to all of our property and the right to contract that. Now what other separate sets of rights, whether conferences or whether other groups or whether institutions like ours, I think it opens the market up. Georgia and Oklahoma are only two of the schools who belong to the College Football Association. The CFA was set up to ironically promote the interests of major schools within the NCAA structure. But since 1979, the CFA has argued for what it calls free enterprise in negotiating and televising games, claiming the NCAA has no right to dictate who gets on what network, when, and how many times. I'm sure we could have negotiated much more lucrative contracts individually. On the other hand, a, a successful foot football program and one that's attractive to the television viewing audience demands good competition. And I'm not at all sure, but that some kind of control system is necessary in order to uh, provide for balanced competition. While the CFA says it is now vindicated, here in Mission, Kansas, at its headquarters, NCAA officials are saying the plan is counterproductive. The NCAA argues that its TV rule, limiting television appearances, brings more fans into the various stadiums, and that under the rule, many smaller colleges not only get national exposure, but share in the network dollars. The argument being, without controls, the strong get stronger, the weak disappear. You would have is virtually the same cities with one college football team as you have in the National Football League. Only those very fortuitously situated colleges which have a great football tradition, great enough to attract television interest. The Notre Dame's Michigan. Right. With also the television market. USC is, is in. We could lose if we continued to in our losing streak, for instance, and any network wasn't interested in us. We could lose up to, to a half a million dollars annually in television revenue. The speculation has already begun over just what all this means. And I think it's apparent now that if, if each school is going to negotiate its own rights with cable systems and broadcasters alike, uh, that the biggest rights are going to go to the teams which are in contention for the national championship, uh, and that that money will be recycled in ways which will benefit the team in future years. Reaction this week has been swift, and while opinions obviously vary, there is agreement that the judge's order could drastically change college football as we know it, for the good or for the bad. The permanent injunction just puts the NCAA out of the television business. It says you just you cannot enter into contracts of this kind and you can't interfere or require uh, an assignment of these property rights as a condition of membership. You simply have to get out of the controlling of television football. It, it'll be like basketball has been. College basketball hasn't been controlled and this will be very much like uh, the televising of college basketball games. Well, the NC has contended that it needed to uh, control football television for one reason was to maintain competitive balance. Other ways to control competitive balance 
it would be through the limit on scholarships, the limit on the number of coaches, restrictions on recruiting, grants and aid and of that nature, and that by trying to control commercial enterprise, that it overstepped its bounds. The federal judge who wrote the order has already refused to postpone it. Now, on Monday, the NCAA attorneys will be in Denver, the Tenth Circuit Court of Appeals, to try and stay the ruling. So the appeal process has obviously begun. This is an important story, gentlemen, and a controversial one. Obviously, a lot of ramifications. I know you have some personal concerns, Coach. Well, I'm concerned about it, Pat. I'm concerned about the direction of college football is going in. You've got to keep in mind that the universities are there to educate. Yeah, they have bills to pay, but the purpose is not to make money. And without some sort of direction, some kind of leadership, some kind of organization and order, there could be chaos in college football. Aaron, Pat, thank you. And we have an update now from Clemson, from Death Valley. Fourth quarter, Boston College has just gone ahead of Clemson, 17-14. And the NCAA Today continues on CBS in just a moment. We told you earlier about the Elway family affair, Jack the father, who will coach San Jose State today against a Stanford team quarterbacked by his son, John. But as Brent found out when he visited their home in San Jose this week, this remarkable story involves more than the men in the family. He is the San Jose State coach, admired and respected. We've had a very close relationship. I think that uh, I owe a lot to him, uh, a lot more than people think I owe him. He is the Stanford quarterback, some say a quarterback without an equal. So I really, uh, you know, admire him as a person and his dedication and his, uh, his competitive attitude along with everything else because he's, uh, he's been a great son. They are father and son. They will oppose each other today. But no matter how hard they try, they will never be ordinary people. Jack, when, uh, when he was coming out of high school, and uh, he could have come with you to, to San Jose, what added incentive could you have offered? Sure. Well, that's, that was interesting. My good friends, uh, Grant, told me that, uh, you know, they always thought I was a pretty good recruiter. And uh, here I was sitting with a top quarterback in the country eating breakfast and, and uh, in our house, and I, I mentioned to them, I did pull out all the stops and the fact that uh, I was going to give them a little cash under the table and uh, buy him a brand new car and even go as far as to uh, have an affair with his mother, but uh, that sounded like a good idea to me, but it was, she wasn't too excited about it. <laughs> you know, I enjoyed sports, too, and played some sports when I was in school, so uh, he's always teased me about having, you know, first he liked my smile, but secondly it was the long legs, and so he <laughs> thought that would be a good breeding stock to produce the son that he wanted. But John now faces the toughest decision of his life. Does he want to become a right fielder with the New York Yankees, or does he want to become a quarterback with an NFL team? His older sister, Leanne, sums up the family's growing ambivalent feelings toward the tough decision that lays ahead. Well, I'd love to see John in Yankee Stadium. I really would in a pinstripe suit. Uh, that would be a tremendous thrill to me, and I'd really, really be proud of him. But uh, I love football, and I've always watched him play football. I always thought he was most exciting when he played football. If I had to choose, of course, I, I think I'd go with football. What would you like to see John do this year, win the Heisman Trophy or wind up in the Rose Bowl? Both. <laughs> Seriously, both. This is the nature of the Elway family, always pulling for each other and always sharing with each other, even though they will try to beat one another on the football field today. I love him so much and we're so close that it's really tough because I've always been a big fan of his and I've always wanted to see him win and, and that's been like number one in our family's not, our, our life was uh, to wait till Saturday and go watch dad playing and both, you know, root him on to a victory. And I think we're going through, uh, and I know we are, an age now to where um, he's seeing me as a person and not so much as a father, and I'm starting to see him as an adult. So uh, with all my kids now who are older, I think we're, uh, we're becoming friends. And uh, I, uh, I, that's kind of special. I like that. 
You know, Brent, uh, my son played for me at Notre Dame, and there was emotion involved in that, but golly, father and son against one another? You know, it's painful for the whole family era. Uh, John was hurt last year, and San Jose State handed him his biggest drubbing ever as a collegiate quarterback, and his mother was not going to go to the game today. She's changed her mind. The whole family's going to go, and she said, I'll just pull for both offenses. And the NCAA today continues on CBS in just a moment. <laughs> Remember how you suffered the last time you had a head cold? Well, remember this. To relieve congestion, sinus pressure, sneezing, and runny nose, no leading nasal spray offers more kinds of relief ingredients than four-way nasal spray. Dristan long-lasting doesn't. Duration doesn't. Afrin doesn't. Four-way works with a combination of two decongestants and an antihistamine. In fact, no leading spray relieves more kinds of cold symptoms than four-way. Not Dristan, not Duration, not Afrin. Remember four-way next time you have a cold. This is the famous Mason-Dixon line. North, south. And this is the famous Firestone Tracks 12 radio. It's a tire for uh, both sides. Up here, you like the fact that for as little as $36.95, you're getting an all-season radio. No putting on snow tires this year. Down here, you like the Tracks 12 because you're getting a steel belted radio for your $36.95. But down here, who worries about the weather? Firestone Tracks 12, all-season radio. We're Hey, Mr. Taylor, flight 90 to Atlanta again, right? Go get them. Working your way across country, huh? How about lunch at your desk? Yeah. Helping America get down to business is one way Eastern earns its wings. For three years in a row now, we've flown more passengers than any other airline in the free world. Give us a try on your way to work. Sir, have a good presentation. On one hand, popular mechanics says Volkswagen Scirocco exudes quality, typically German, in fit and finish. On the other hand, car and driver says the Scirocco exudes a special tingle that serious drivers can feel in their bones. now told us that unofficially the Miami quarterback Jim Kelly has suffered a separated shoulder. They will not know for sure, however, until the team returns to Miami, of course, and further x-rays are taken. Coach, a couple of key games tonight. Washington is down in Tucson to take on Arizona, and uh, you think that Washington could have his hands full? Well, the fact that they named number one, which we talked about earlier, and uh, Arizona is a good football team. They knocked off USC last year, Stanford, and they're off to a good start with a win over Oregon. Irish, are they ready? Michigan? <laughs> oh, I hope so. I watched them practice twice this week. They brought in a new offensive coach. Now, wait a minute. None of that I hope so. You've got to be impartial. Now, you got to remember, we got well, SC fans, UCLA. <laughs> I know they're out there, but they know where I stand. <laughs> okay. We'll see you in halftime with scores and highlights. We hope you sit back now, relax, and enjoy the NCAA Today on CBS. <laughs> Among the things we left behind in Vietnam were thousands of our children. They're our children because their fathers are Americans. 60 Minutes, tomorrow on CBS. California has lots of things to keep you smiling, including California dental service. Five and a half million Californians are covered. You pick your own dentist, and we help pay for it. We were the first group dental service plan, and we're the largest. California Dental Service. We have a plan to keep you smiling. Buying your business phones makes good sense today. And now you can buy from General Telephone. Buy outright or on a lease purchase plan. Electronic key systems for small companies. Digital PABXs for big ones. 
and we service what we sell. The benefits of ownership plus phone company service. Call General Telephone. Your phones have always been our business. This is British Caledonian Airways, British flag carrier to five continents. From your country, we fly to London and on to over 40 major cities worldwide, giving you a part of Britain no other airline can. Our unique British-style service from one of Europe's largest independent airlines and climbing. At British Caledonian Airways, we never forget you have a choice. Fly our 7.30 p.m. non-stop from Los Angeles to London. In Search of the Holy Grail, tonight at 7. This is John Elway, Stanford's record-setting quarterback, an All-American who's among the top contenders for the 1982 Heisman Trophy. Last week, Elway was Associated Press Back of the Week as he dazzled Purdue, hitting 29 of 36 passes for 333 yards and four touchdowns as Stanford beat the Boilermakers 35 to 14. Elway picks from a variety of wide receivers, including tailback Vincent White, who made 11 catches last week and leads the nation in receiving, and wide receiver Mike Tolliver. Today, Elway faces the nation's best defensive backs, Gil Bird, and this man, number 37, Kenny Thomas, whose next scoring pass interception will break the NCAA record in that department. Last year, Coach Jack Elway beat his son 28 to 6. Today, a rematch of the Elways live on CBS. Sports presents NCAA football. The San Jose State Spartans versus the Stanford Cardinals. Today's game is sponsored by Chevrolet and your local Chevy dealers from coast to coast. And by Miller Highlight. Welcome to Miller Time. Welcome to Stanford Stadium on what has turned out to be a bright, sunny afternoon. Lots of stories here today. Elway versus Elway, San Jose State versus Stanford, Elway versus Clarkson, and Elway and the Heisman Trophy. Hi, everybody. I am Bob Murphy, and this is Steve Davis. And right here in this stadium, 12 years ago, a fellow by the name of Jim Plunkett won the Heisman Trophy. He had a team that went 8-3, and three, Steve. Then they went to the Rose Bowl and defeated a truly great Ohio State team. Does that opportunity present itself to John, he John Elway here today? I almost called him John Heisman, and that was his name. I think so, because really it's to an advantage of John to have a real tough schedule because he can really, with his stats, prove himself. I think there are several other factors that John's got to have this year. One, he's got to stay healthy because last year he was plagued by injuries, an ankle injury that slowed him down. He was not statistically the John Elway of 1980. Also, he's got to learn to use his, his talent around develop a supporting cast of good players because Dan Marino, Jim Kelly, all those players push too hard too soon. He doesn't have to do that. And then finally, he needs a winning season because only one time in the history of the Heisman has someone won it with a losing team, and that was Horning in 56. And last year, the Cardinal 4-7. and seven. That probably will not do it for Elway, but much of that will be written here today before 60,000 people and all of you out there watching on television. Hello again, everybody. I told my old pal Steve Davis from Oklahoma it doesn't rain in California in September, but it did. It rained yesterday. It rained a little bit today. But now we have a bright, sunny afternoon. We also have a team called the San Jose State Spartans. We've talked so much about John Elway. But let's talk a little bit, in fairness, about another truly great performer. His name is Steve Clarkson. Really, his statistics are outstanding. Jack Elway, his coach, said that he's one of the top five quarterbacks in the country, but it's obviously is overshadowed by John Elway down the road from him. But I think the key about Steve Clarkson is he, the leadership capacity of what he's taken on this team. He has lost weight, 45 pounds the last two years. He's a much talented thrower. He's intelligent. He's using his intelligence. He's an All-American as far as 
quarterback academically, yeah. so he's a real key to this football team, and it really does a lot of things well. He's got a lot of great receivers. One you ought to take note of is a fellow by the name of Tim Pierce. Number one, you'll be able to find him easily. He catches passes. He also takes the ball on inside reverses, and the San Jose State coaches have been generous enough to tell us he might even throw the ball today. He's a multi-purpose type player, and really, as you said, does it all. He's got tremendous speed, and he really is the talent. He's able to come out because he's a former high school quarterback. He can read defenses, so he gets an advantage on the defense early. He'll catch it a lot today. Defensively, we talked about Burden Thomas, two outstanding cornerbacks. Steve McEnroe might just be, number 72, the best defensive lineman on this field. He did not practice all week. He's got a bad ankle, so his condition will be something of a question here today. The theory of San Jose is try to put some pressure on John Elway. The best way is put the pressure with Steve McEnroe. Well, the story's unfolding. We'll be right back. Bob and Sandy Davis needed two incomes to afford the home they wanted. Then tragedy struck. All state update. Joint mortgage protection. Sandy died before the mortgage was paid. All state life's joint mortgage protection could have helped pay off their mortgage if either of them died for less than the price of two policies. But the Davises didn't have it. If you both work, talk to an all state agent for life, home, and auto. Put yourself in good hands. Look at me. Do you like what you see? Good. Because it's not me. It's a recording of me on Nimrex videotape. This remarkable tape has been recorded and re-recorded 100 times, but I bet you still couldn't tell if it was Memorex or me, which really isn't me. It's Memorex. Memorex videotape. Even after 100 recordings, you'll wonder, is it live or is it Memorex? everybody, Bob Murphy, Steve Davis, Stanford Stadium, the Cardinal of Stanford, the Spartans of San Jose State. Stanford has won the toss, and they will receive across the way Paul Wigan with the same haircut he had in 1956 when he played with John Brody right here on the farm. The San Jose Rooters, they think they have really caught lightning in a bottle with Coach Jack Elway, and there is Jack. Jack and his team do not even work out on Friday. They don't even show up. They don't put any uniforms on. He's a casual coach in the way he approaches a game, but he builds a certain special kind of intensity. Mike Bird does all the kicking for San Jose State. He does the placements. He does the field goals. He also does the punting. There are not many players in college football who do all the kicking, but Bird does, and he will kick off from our right to our left. Deep is Mike Dodderer for Stanford. He would have played professional baseball this year if he had been drafted a little bit higher. I'm sure he will next year. Number 24, he was 11th in the country in kickoff returns a year ago. They want him to handle the ball. Stanford would normally have a wind behind their back moving from left to right. That's from north to south, but we've got rain conditions here today. The wind is blowing from the south. Elway will throw into a short wind. Berg's kick all the way to the back of the end line. Dodderer catches it. It is a touchback. The ball will start at the 20-yard line. Let's take a look at the Stanford lineup. There you see Elway, uh, Vincent White, who caught 11 passes last week. Greg Hooper from Santa Clara. Emil Harry. Chris Dressel, the tight end, caught his first touchdown pass just last week in that Purdue game, but he'll catch a lot of passes here today if we see double coverage, and I think we will on the outside receivers. Across the way, Harry goes wide left. Tolliver is wide on the near side. The setbacks are White and Hooper. 22 and 40, respectively. Elway is going to throw. Big surprise. Tolliver all alone on, Be on Bird. Bird makes the tackle at the 26. It'll be a gain of six. Second and four at the 26. And we will take a look defensively, Steve. They're the defensive front. They've really got to make the pressure up front. McEnroe's the key. His ankle's bothering right now. But they have really got to force some pressure on John Elway all day long. And there are the linebackers, Woodburn and Matheny. They're very talented players at their positions. They're going to have to drop in the zone areas and be able to protect and look for the underneath routes all day. Look at White as a wide receiver lined up out of your picture to the left. Now he drops back. They move Harry up to a receiving position in the tight end slot. This is a new formation for the Cards. Elway, with lots of time, hits Harry for the first down. Gain of about seven yards on the play to the 33-yard line. It'll be a first down for the Cardinal. 
and don't think we're making a mistake. It is the Cardinal. It is singular, Steve. It is not the Cardinals. President Don Kennedy here at Stanford made that decision that we are talking about the Cardinal, the color. And that's the way we will call it here this afternoon. Elway brings them up. Wide receivers, both sides, Tolliver to the left. Harry on the near side. Audible. Elway changing the play. He's got the tight end on the left. He's got White in motion. Too much time. Elway with the audible that time. Steve took a little bit too much time in college football. 25 seconds or the whistle. Part of the problem of what John was trying to do, he saw the linebackers in the gap, and San Jose State's plan is to try to show John a lot of different looks. Play on his intelligence. Delay. Make him Watch make that. a call, get out of the bad play, and then get back out of it and confuse him. Give him different looks. It's an interesting concept to play on the intelligence of a great player. They will move the ball back to the 27-yard line. It'll be first and 15, no loss of down. Tolliver now to the left side. White again in a wide receiving position. Harry in the backfield. Remember, there's a throwback pass to Elway in here someplace. Switching now with Tolliver coming up to a wide end position as Elway looking for Harry. He's got him up the 40. Gain of about 13. The ball will go to the 41-yard line. Let's make it a gain of 14 yards to the 41-yard line, and you'd have to say that Elway is on target. Again, San Jose State came in with a linebacker showing a blitz, then dropping out of it, and then going to man-type coverage underneath, and John still threaded the needle, put the ball right where it had to be with Harry. Short of the first down. Let's make a correction on that. The penalty, it was first and 15, picked up about 13, between 13 and 14 on the play. It's second now in a long yard and a half. Hooper on the draw. He's going to be very close to the first down. He picked up a couple of yards. Woodburn made the tackle. Ken Woodburn, a senior from La Mirada, made 12 tackles in the game last week against Oregon. Led the Spartans in that department, Steve. He's a fine linebacker. San Jose State's got some excellent talent on defense. The problem is, is when you're going against such a superior player, you have to think in terms of whether we're going to put a pretty good blitz on him and we're gonna, or we're going to drop back and play pass defense. And right now the strategy is, is is really drop back and play and yet try to get some hard rush out of the four men up front, get him different fronts to look at and confuse him a little bit. Steve, there are two fellas out there that have been carrying down markers at Stanford for, I don't know whether it's 100 years, but it's pretty close. Jack Jorgensen's an attorney in nearby... Menlo Park and Weldon Hoot Gibson, longtime leading executive with Stanford Research Institute, also in Menlo Park. Those two have been carrying those down markers in Stanford Stadium for years. Paul Wigan with a look of anxiety. Barely short of the first down. What's the third inches play, Boomer Sooner? At Oklahoma, we'd run a fullback base <laughs> play. <laughs> We've got Rob Moore in, number 33 at fullback. Moore takes it. It'll be, uh, I think he got it with a second effort. And a fullback base play. <laughs> and a fullback base play right out of this Boomer Sooner notebook. So we'll move the ball forward to the 44, Rob Moore, whose father, incidentally, was an NCAA swimming champion when he was at Stanford. Second first down for the Cardinal. Harry is in tight, playing as a tight end now, that little guy, and Tolliver goes in motion. Hooper's back in the game. Elway to throw. He's got his back. That's Vincent White trying to get inside. Good pursuit on the play. Jim Fossil, the offensive coordinator this year, said that the strategy last year, they really didn't know who they were offensively because John was hobbled with injuries, and, and they decided they were trying early in the season to set up the pass with the run. The concept has changed. They're saying, we're Stanford, we're going to throw the football, and we're going to set up a run with our pass. James Rowley made the stop playing in the place of Steve McEnroe. He's wearing number 90. He's from Los Angeles, playing that right tackle slot. Wide receivers. This is Elway back to throw again. He's got some pressure. Now he's got plenty of time. He's got all day now. And give him that much time to hit the receiver. First down. The gain is to the 37-yard line. Harry on the catch. Let's take another look at that. Let's look at Emil Harry.
from Fountain Valley. He's a sophomore, six feet, 165 pounds. And when Elway has that much time, he's just going to get the pass off and he's going to complete it. And in a nickel situation, with Ray Williams in there on the coverage, Elway burned him. San Jose in that nickel defense again. Tolliver split to the right side. Wide receiver way outside is Harry. Then they run against the grain. This is White. White finding some running room. He got a great block that time from number 61, Matt Moran, the veteran offensive lineman for the Cardinal. Very, very shifty. Strong side right formation. They ran against the grain with Vincent White. He's elusive, isn't he? He really is. And, of course, he really looks like a prototype, or at least to Darren Nelson, that type of player. In a, and more and more, we're seeing the small player they're making across the, the professional uh, football ranks. We're seeing a bunch of them in the pros. And Vincent White is really something to watch. Gain of seven, second and three. Harry and Mullins now in the game, both split left. Elway may be changing the play since Tolliver wide right. The lone remaining back is Rob Moore, number 33. Elway to throw again. They've got it. They got him that time with Bob Matheny, a 6'3", 225-pound senior from San Leandro. Matheny made nine tackles against Oregon. The two linebackers, Woodburn and Matheny, the leading tacklers in that game just a week ago. Steve? This time he gets a lot of pressure. Of course, Matheny is coming from his linebacker position. It was a blitz. That time the offensive line of Tevis and Engel and Moran didn't pick him up, and he put the pursuit, and uh, it was able to put John down for a big loss. Third and five at the 43. They need a lot of that today. Vincent White, Hooper, Tolliver split right, Harry split left, Tolliver in motion. Bird goes with him. Bird will cover him man-to-man. -man. They're going to try to throw against the grain. Vincent White, the intended receiver. Good coverage on the play by the Spartans. Excellent coverage. Dirk Hunter Ellis, the strong safety, picking up White that time. Running once again on a delay pattern to the backside, trying to free up White. But Dirk Hunter Ellis, another senior, he's from Tacoma, Washington. He made an interception and returned at nine yards against Oregon last week. A veteran player and a good one. First incomplete pass for Elway. He's now five for six for 45 yards. Hunter for Stanford is Greg Top. He doesn't kick long ones, but he can kick very accurately. And to a fair catch to Kearse. A fair catch is at the nine-yard line. The Spartans will go from there. Chevrolet Celebrity. Come drive the bright new shape of Chevrolet Celebrity. Chevrolet's newest and largest front-wheel drive. A shape so aerodynamic, it requires less than 12 horsepower to cruise at 50 miles per hour. Celebrity. The comforts of a larger car. The precision of front-wheel drive come together. Now special allowances make it possible for Chevy dealers to save you up to $700 on new celebrities. From the leading edge of technology comes a new generation of video electronics from Zenith. At the touch of a button, the giant screen rises and you enjoy Space Screen 45 TV. Push a Space Phone button and turn your TV into a telephone. Produce a movie with your VCR and play it back on Zenith's new component TV system with stereo capability. Video High Tech, part of the new generation from Zenith, where the quality goes in before the name goes on. We are back. A 28-yard punt by Greg Topp. Fair catch on the 15-yard line, and the Spartans have their first chance of the afternoon with Clarkson. Both quarterbacks wear number seven. Nicholas, the tight end, goes to the right side. Wide receivers all over the place. That is Smalley on the carry. Let's take a look at the offensive setup for San Jose State. You see Clarkson, Smalley, number 42 at fullback. Untested, Bobby Johnson, a junior college transfer from Monterey Peninsula. The Great Tim Kearse, Eric Richardson, and Gerald Wilhite is now with the Denver Broncos. Bill Nicholas, the tight end. Veterans across that offensive line. Jack Elway has built a lot of strength with junior college transfers, and he gets veteran players in there. Wide receivers, Smalley in motion. Look like a little motion on the set. Kearse will throw. We told you he would throw. He's got a receiver. We told 
told you prior to the game that Kearse would be throwing, and let's listen to this. Reverse to Kearse. Watch Kearse. He was a high school quarterback. There he throws the ball deep. It's going to Tony Smith, 22. 46 is covering. That's Charles Hutchins, a strong safety. And it was foot for foot. But Tony Smith, excellent speed, just broke past him. Of course, they were thinking run off the uh, pitch to Kearse because Kearse is so dangerous, you've got to be concentrating on him. And then all of a sudden, the big play. They had shown the run, the inside reverse to Kearse, five times in that Oregon game last week. Now, can you believe Mike Berg is going to take a timeout on the extra point? They must, they must be short a player. We'll take a look at it when we come back. The first pass that Tim Kears threw in San Jose State history for him was to this man, Tony Smith, a senior or a junior rather from San Diego, California. 170 pound junior and boy did he fly 84 yards to the touchdown San Jose coaches had told us they had that play they thought it might work and boy did it work Berg puts it up and good 7 to nothing Spartans and we are only 835 on the clock at this point here's the play again it's like a drop back but you've got when you've got Kearse out there you've got to be real conscious of what he can do once he gets the ball but he throws the ball the secondary has a tendency to lighten up just a little bit and there's Tony Smith a step all is all he needs because Kearse put the ball right where it had to be that's the luxury of having a gifted player that is at a wide receiver position a former quarterback he knows how to throw is in his environment and don't you, don't you really think Steve that Hutchings, who intercepted a pass last week and returned at 34 yards, was really thinking run defense because they had seen Kearse run that play against Oregon, and he never showed any indication that he might put it up. That's right. Anytime. Once again, Jack Elway, if he shows you one thing, you can be sure that there will be something spinning off it as the weeks unravel. Anytime you've got a great player that gets possession of the ball, you've got to be conscious of where he is on the field. And for a secondary, it puts tremendous pressure on him to react, whether to come up, to lay back, and also on the, on the, on the forcing of the defense. At that time, he made the big play. There's Jack Elway. There's one Elway, John Elway. There's the other one, his father, Jack. Tony Smith played for the state champion San Diego Mesa College team just a year ago. Got her. Bring it out from four yards deep. 15, up to the 20. Could have just let that one go and not taken the beating and would have had it the same place, huh, Steve? It's not a little, whole lot of fun on, on the kamikaze squad of taking it on like that. But sometimes you see something when you get the ball that deep in the end zone, you see a seam or something and uh, you pull it out, you might get lucky. But if you don't get to the 20, you'd rather go, usually go back to the sidelines with your head between your legs. Mike Maurer in on the stop, along with Tim McKayla. Stanford up to the ball. Stanford averaged 6.5 yards per play on their last drive, but didn't put anything on the board, and then the Spartans exploded in such a hurry. Harry is on the left side. Inside, little counter to Vincent White. Didn't look like anything was there, but he got a couple of yards. We've got a flag on the play. Flag was thrown right in the middle of that Stanford offensive line. The officials today, that is Jack Gatto. Jack Gatto, the referee. Gary Kearns is the umpire. Charles Stewart is the headlinesman. Gaylord Bryant. Gaylord Bryant, probably the second greatest track and field athlete ever in Stanford history. Kind of interesting, he's doing a Stanford game, the line judge. Field judge, Bill Del Biagio. Dan Hill, the back judge. The alternate today is Bill Richardson. And the best track and field athlete in Stanford history? How about Bob Mathias? It was a holding penalty. They'll take it half the distance. There it is. Go first down. Elway brings them up. Got Tolliver wide right, Harry wide left. Tight end Dressel on the near side. Elway is going to get some pressure. He's got a little trouble. He's also got a little speed. 
Gets it back almost to the line of scrimmage. He gets it, gets it up to the point where they almost started. Made some yardage on the play to the 20. When you're talking Heisman Trophy candidates, this is what separates John Elway from everybody else. His ability, once he gets pressure, to sense the pressure, he's got great vision, then to do something with it. He made 10 yards back. Marino, Kelly, Miami, none of those players have that dimension. That's what defensive coaches fear most. There are great passers in the country, but the ability to run and the combination of great thrower are what makes John Elway set apart. Set the line of scrimmage, and we're talking, of course, about the original line of scrimmage, where it's now second and ten. Vincent White, he's got Moran out in front of him. He's got a lot of Spartans in front of him also. All kinds of pressure by the Spartans, leading the charge. Number 98, Kerry Ford. Bob Matheny, number 96, also in there. Moran was the pulling guard. He ran right by Ford and Matheny. They came in to make the stop. And the defensive coaches would say, we stuffed that one. It was a great defensive call, too, to have that kind of uh, penetration. They've got to have penetration on that Stanford line. Right now, it looks like, or appears like, that San Jose State is winning the battle at the, off at the line, line of scrimmage. Stanford came into this ballgame thinking they had a better offensive line from last year, but right now, San Jose State's creating a little interesting uh, situation line. Loss of five, third and 15. Elway wants to get that first down. He's got some time. Now he's got some pressure. Elway runs it very judiciously out of bounds as he got pressure by LaParter Washington. Chasing him out on the 22-yard line. So he will get seven on the play, but far short of the first down. Greg Top comes in to punt. This has been a little bit of a problem. Top with a 28-yarder to a fair catch for the first Spartan possession. Average just a little over 30 yards just a week ago, and this has been a problem department for the Cardinal. any wind in the stadium. It's negligible, so that won't affect this punt one way or the other. Top with a wobbly punt over in the direction of the San Jose bench. That ball will go out at the 45-yard line. So the Spartans have real good field position in their second possession. They lead 7-0. We are back. Bob Murphy, Steve Davis, Stanford Stadium. The Spartans of San Jose up on top 7-0 with 6.23 remaining in the first quarter. Second possession for San Jose. Tight end on the left side. This is Clarkson. Clarkson throws for the first time today. He's got a wide open receiver and throws it past him. The intended receiver was Eric Richardson. Richardson, who caught four passes for 52 yards and a touchdown last week against Oregon, had a wide open receiver and just flat missed him that time. Sometimes Clarkson to his criticism as we look at the defensive line, excuse me, there's Berger and Jackson Mitchell. They've got their hands full. They need to put pressure on him. The linebackers, Veris is an outstanding player. Two pretty new ones there at the middle inside, and then there's the secondary. Tony Smith is wide right. In the slot is Kearse, and you can be sure Stanford's going to watch Kearse in that slot. Quick pass over the middle. Kearse, he's got a chance to go. He will score for San Jose State. He goes right between them. One falls down the safety, and here's Price make, trying to make an effort, but he he's, doesn't have enough to get there. That was Vaughn Williams, oh, me, Vaughn Williams, who slipped and fell down. The kick by Berg is good, and San Jose is up on top surprisingly in this contest. 14 to nothing. Well, would you believe the San Jose State Spartans have run four plays. They have scored two touchdowns. The last one, 53 yards. The ball started on the San Jose 47. 53 yards, and Kearse taking it in all the way. Berg coming forward. Donnerer is deep. This one will not be handled by Donnerer. Across the way, that is Mullins. Mullins with some room. Gets up past the 25. 
to about the 27. Let's take another look at that touchdown play. Clarkson, watch him. It's kind of dry, just a three-step drop. He goes right down the middle. Kearse is going to split right down the middle of the two halves. What happens on that is Vaughn Williams, 45, had that to cover that area, but he falls down and Price is at the chase of Kearse and he doesn't have doesn't take the distance, didn't pick him up quick enough. And there is Timmy Kearse who has figured so prominently in both San Jose touchdowns. The Spartans have had the ball only 57 seconds. I'd never stop to figure out what happens if you score two touchdowns a minute. This is Hooper. He's got a little bit of room, gets up inside, close to a first down fumble, covered by Dressel of Stanford. Chris Dressel, the tight end, very alertly falling on that fumble, and that will be a first down for the Cardinal. Hawkins on the coverage, forcing the fumble. Good picture of John Elway and Rob Moore, number 33, coming into the game. What an explosive offense, and if Paul Wigan looks a little worried, I think you can understand why. Dressel, the tight end, is on the right side. Tolliver split right. Tolliver now in motion. Elway trying to get the Cardinal on the board. He's got a receiver. Bounced off the hands of Emil Harry. Harry just couldn't hold on that time. Jack Elway has some interesting things to say about his son, John. He credits Jack Newmeyer, John's coach at Granada Hills High School in Southern California with a lot of the development, the quick development that John has shown. He says that Newmeyer has great knowledge of the passing game and taught John things that most high school quarterbacks never even approach. Jack Newmeyer's retired, but he couldn't stay away from football. He's still coaching down in the San Diego area. Wide receivers to the left and one to the right. Elway, plenty of room up the middle. He's got two linebackers to run away from. Elway, first down. Elway out of bounds at the 41-yard line. Gain of about 19 yards on the play as he was chased by Bobby Grant and Bob Matheny. Let's take another look, Steve. San Jose State goes to a man coverage. Now, John Elway realizes that. He drops. He senses pressure. He sees an open area. Now, he knows that the secondary is out of the way. That His backs, his receivers have taken him out of the picture. All he's got to worry about is linebackers. That's what makes the great play. He outran Woodburn, and that's how he got himself wide open. Elway, they're not anxious for him to do that. They don't like the risk of, of injury, but John will take it if you give it to him. Lone remaining back is Rob Moore. White is in the short slot. Elway, screen, covered beautifully by the Spartans. That was a great play by Bob Matheny as the screen was to Rob Moore and it didn't fool Matheny. Matheny from San Leandro, the senior. He is a leading cog in this San Jose State defense. This is a veteran defensive team. San Jose State starts eight of 11 lettermen on defense. All eight are seniors. Nine of the top 20 are lettermen, and nine of them are seniors. Two tight ends. Second down. All the way to throw. Elway has a wide open receiver. Takes it in. Takes it in.
one side of the field and worked so vigorous the coverage. That time, John saw that he had a back coming out of the backfield, Vincent White. And uh, Ken Thomas, 37 in the corner, had laid off, was late in getting to the coverage area, and it was a touchdown. Easy play for John Elway. Elway now 8 for 10, 99 yards, including that 45-yard touchdown to Vincent White. White, ever dangerous, just as is Tim Kearse for the Spartans. Five plays, 73 yards. And the Spartans, who really haven't had the ball very much, you wonder about time of possession. They just keep it long enough to score. Well, let's see what they do with this kickoff. It's going to be whoever is ahead at the end. I mean, the, the, the game's just going to run out is what's going to happen. Well, would you believe that Tim Kearse is going to run this one back? Now he's going to lateral to Kenny Taylor. How about that play? Kenny Taylor up across the 40, and Jack Elway pulls the rabbit out of the hat again, Steve. Oh, yeah. Pierce is going to be the top passer of the day if we don't watch it. I'll tell you, if Jack Elway keeps this up, Spartans might be on television every week. This is about as entertaining oh, this as makes it fun. Any Here's of the here. old Ed He even fumbles it a little bit. He's got everybody set up. He sets up. It's a backward pass. There's no such thing as a lateral in college football. It's a backward pass. There it is, the 25, and he makes the great play. Kenny Taylor. Davey Nelson would be proud of you, Steve. Clarkson to throw. Not much room. Boy, is he strong. He was hit by Terry Jackson. And Fergren also there. Mitchell also in. There's John Elway. He's on the phone to Jim Fossil sitting up in the booth. Stanford play calling is from Fossil to Wigan. It is second down and 11. The ball is on the 38-yard line as Clarkson brings them up. Kearson, a short slot. Look at this formation. Look at this. In motion to Smith. Inside, shuffle pass to Small. Read beautifully by the nose guard, Jackson. And Big Terry pulled him down. Terry Jackson, a sophomore from Washington, D.C. Let's take a look at this, Steve. This is a new formation for them. Let's watch. There's Steve Clarkson. Little shuffle pass inside. That's a forward pass is what that is. And had they uh, fumbled it or it been incomplete? If they dropped it, it had been an incomplete pass. Do you know that? <laughs> That's right. Behind the line okay. of scrimmage. Behind forward the pass. Zone, it forward pass. If he dropped it, it been a fumble. First I mean, third down situation for San Jose. Right end on the right side. Clarkson almost sure to throw, and he does. Got a wide open receiver as Pierce again. Pierce for the first down. Pierce is a loose end. Pierce running wild against the Cardinal here today. A fumble recovered by Hutchings of Stanford. Hutchings, who was burned so badly on one play, comes up with the fumble. Eric Trice on the hit. Let's take another look, Steve. This is a big play here in this first quarter with 2.56 remaining. Great play. Clarkson makes the right call right across the middle. Kearse is there. He's working on a linebacker. What's the play? See how, well, he's got the ball away from his body. He's running like he's, he's a quarterback. There it is. He did drop the ball. Fumble. That's right. And then Hutchings, 46, a strong safety falls on it. Hutchings, number 46 from Panol, a junior from Panol. And Elway and crew go back to work. They got Harry wide left, Tolliver wide right. Inside handoff to Vincent White. A little bit of room. Tuli Anu'u a did a good job of checking. And then he got some help from some friends, Matheny among them. Matheny has been very active out there. Tuli Anu'u who is from Carson, California, made seven tackles last week against Oregon. Turned Vincent White inside. Gain of, they're calling it two. So that moves the ball to the 41-yard line, where it will be second and eight. White has three yards. Remember, he had that big loss, a five-yard loss, as Elway gets into the shotgun. He doesn't like the setup. He's going to call timeout, and Jack Gatto, the referee, is going to check the football. Maybe John doesn't like the ball. Didn't make any difference at Oklahoma, did it, Steve? Huh? Didn't make any difference you, at all. You didn't care whether it was pumped or stuffed, did you? No, that's right. <laughs> Just <a long> time. <laughs> Anything that had glue on it was more appreciable. <laughs> okay, here we go. What a football game this has been already. Fasten your seatbelts. Here we go again. Elway in a down. Elway is in the shotgun. White alongside him in a down position. Elway fumbles. Elway fumbling the snap. 
the snap from Mike Tevis, Elway had trouble with and was lucky to fall on it. There were lots of Spartans around the ball, and once again, Bob Matheny, number 96, almost got his hands on it. Elway a little unsettled at this point, you think, Steve? Oh, no. I, I, no I, you do that a thousand times over the course of the season, trying to take that snap, and John was looking at the secondary and probably thinking a little bit about something else and uh, just dropped the ball. Bust him about nine yards. And the down. Stanford one for three in the third down conversion department. Tolliver is in motion. All kinds of receivers out there. Elway, open receiver. He's got Tolliver. First down. Gain of about 22 yards. Make it 23 yards on the play to the 45-yard line of San Jose. This is what John Elway sees. Look at him. He's being able to look right across the middle, goes right over the top of Kenny Thomas and threads the needle, needle right there to Tolliver, number 26, right across the middle. Beautiful picture of what John Elway sees. He saw across the middle, had to throw it right over and in between and just put the velocity on the ball and complete the pass. Going against that nickel defense, all kinds of defensive backs there trying to cover, but Elway with a perfect strike. He's going to try it again. He's got loads of time. He's got Tolliver. He's got Tolliver to the three. Where are you, defense? What's John Elway to go to Tolliver? Goes down the field about 15, 20 yards, then just kind of moseys on across the middle. There's Thomas and Hawkins, but they're not there fast enough. You've got to get on these people. These receivers are too quick. They know how to run their routes too precision-like. And John Elway is so precision-minded, you've got to get on closer than that. They're giving too much cushion. 43 yards on the play. The officials mark it on the two. He's got Hooper, and he's got White. This is White. He's there. number 40 trying to blast his way through the hole also helping Matt Moran number 61 the onside guard as Vincent White takes it from two yards out Paul Wigan with a decidedly different look than he had a short time ago when he was trailing 14 nothing with this kick the Cardinal could tie it up to 14 all Harmon has it on the way it's good and we've got a tie ball game Elway picking apart a nickel defense as the Spartans are sending in a fifth defensive back trying so hard to cover receivers while at the same time put pressure on Elway. But Tolliver, wide open. Really with the first quarter just about over what's happened. Both offenses have really controlled and both defenses. It's not been a match and when the offenses have not scored. It's because they stopped themselves right now. Both teams are very successful on the ball. John is doing a great job, and so is Steve Clarkson. We've got a good quarterback matchup today, and they're throwing exceptionally well. I wonder if anyone at home has even dared to go to the refrigerator or anywhere else in the house, for that matter. Uh, we're going to see a lot of points today. It's obvious. Stanford's idea on defense is to play rather conservative, but not have their kids have to think a whole lot, just play good position football. And San Jose State on defense, they're going to go at you, so we're going to have a lot of fireworks one way or the other. electrifying contest thus far deep Kenny Taylor and Kearse number one Taylor number 25 Harmon kicking off remember the last time we saw that backward pass Lord knows what we'll see this time Fumble. we'll see him fight over it I guess is what we'll see Might that be. seemed to have opened things up for Kenny Taylor Taylor takes it all the way back out to the 39 yard line after bobbling the ball and the kicker Harmon number eight in on the stop There's the scoring drive, five plays, 61 yards, 229. The Spartans haven't taken that long to score their two. These are two teams that have really benefited from the new rules regarding the blocking in the offensive line in the passing game. Mike Tolliver. 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 <laughs> it's a smiling Mike. face. The touchdown drives, if you can call them drives, we'll give you those in a minute as Clarkson brings the Spartans back up. Remember the fumble gave... The cards, the football. Clarkson. 
Off the target that time intended for Richardson. Coverage by Vaughn Williams, Eric Price. Backing up the linebacker, Gary Wimmer, number 58. Those TD drives, Steve, kind of interesting. For San Jose, 45 seconds and 12 seconds. For Stanford, a minute 39 and 229. Those aren't you what, what you'd call those old wishbone or veer drives, are they? That's right. When we were looking at Clarkson there just a minute. He was He's a 3.3 student. He was a little bit heavy two years ago. In fact, he's lost 45 pounds as we look at Paul Wigan. But he is an exceptional quarterback, and he really does the short game uh, justice by his ability to read defenses quickly. It's second and 10 at the 35. Clarkson to throw. Clarkson almost had a receiver. Now he's got an interception as that ball was intercepted by Darrell Grissom, number 17. Grissom, a sophomore from Phoenix, comes in as the nickel man in that Stanford defense. That ball was deflected, and Grissom came down with it, and he's going to take the football with him. Watch Clarkson. Now, this time, this is the old tip drill. Watch Vaughn Williams, 45. He's going to tip the ball up in the air and give him a chance. The ball's trying to go to Eric Richardson. There's the tip, and there's the precision. There's the concentration and the play by Grisham. He was tipped twice. I think Vaughn Williams also had a tip on that. Tomorrow, the NFL Today kicks off a great day of doubleheader action. Check your local listings for your games tomorrow, right here on CBS Sports. The Cardinal back up, trying to take their first lead of the ball game. Elway, trouble in River City. That's shades of last year. When Elway, on a bad leg, was sacked seven times. They got to him that time. Kerry Ford, number 98. We're at the end of the first quarter with this one all tied up at 14-all. Hello again, everybody. Bob Murphy, Steve Davis at Stanford Stadium as you look at John Elway, a bona fide Heisman Trophy candidate in this 1982 football season, brings his cards up after being sacked the second time this afternoon for a loss of six. It's second and 16. All at the 42. Elway screen. He's got Vincent White. He'll get a gain, but I don't know. He will not get the first down. I thought White might scamper away. Backing up that time. Elway throwing to Vincent White for Hawkinson Woodburn and on the stop. Gain of 10 yards. Ah, North Carolina 34 to 10 over Vanderbilt. They're coming back from that lost to Pittsburgh. I understand that Kevin Bryant had a little bit of an injury problem. Not, we don't know what degree, but hopefully not very serious. Third down, seven to go. Ball on the 48. On the San Jose 48. Shotgun. Moore is back there with Elway to give him some help. Elway has a receiver. It's Harry. Mason Dixon line, north, south, and this is the famous Firestone Tracks 12 radio. It's a tire for uh, both sides. Up here, you like the fact that for as little as 36.95, you're getting an all-season radio. No putting on snow tires this year. Down here, you like the Tracks 12 because you're getting a steel belted radio for your 36.95. But down here, no worries about the weather. Firestone Tracks 12 all-season radio. Now, whenever and wherever you move in the West, you can take your bank account, credit, and good reputation along with you. But only if you bank at First Interstate Bank. 
the only bank system with over 900 offices throughout all 11 western states. And the only bank that can help you move your account, eliminate first-year fees on credit cards, even pre-qualify you for a line of credit. So make your next move to First Interstate Bank, where convenience comes with the territory. I really like you two. Meet two square pegs in high school. You've got no style. Premiering Monday. <laughs> I mean, your style is anti-style. September 27th. You know what I mean? Mark Harmon for the Cardinal. This one is taken by Kierce, number one. Oh, he's buried. Kierce is literally buried by Jack Gilmet on the Stanford special teams. John Elway. Would you believe 12 of 14 for 223 yards, two touchdowns today, and we are barely in to the second quarter of play, 14.01 exactly remaining to the half. If he keeps this pace up, I wonder if anybody's ever thrown for 600 yards, 800 yards. <laughs> no, but he's certainly one person has a great chance of doing it. Oh, boy. Clarkson, tight end Nicholas on the right side, handed to Smalley. Smalley is met by the tight end Jackson right at the line of scrimmage, or rather the nose guard Jackson. Penalty on the play, at least a flag is down. We'll wait and watch that one. The last two possessions for the Spartans have ended with a fumble and an interception, which have both resulted in Stanford scores. There is Emil Harry. He's the premier wide receiver, he really is. And he can throw, too. Mm -hmm. We told you about Kierce. Emil Harry is an old quarterback. He didn't look very old, does he? But he was a quarterback. Outstanding athlete from Fountain Valley, California, down in Orange County. Caught five for 68 yards against Purdue. Last year, he caught 10 for 196. Didn't score any touchdowns last year, but he'll score a lot before he's through here on the farm. His high school coach was Mike Milner, who coached another great Stanford player, Ken Marjoram. People remember him, Kenny so. with the Chicago Bears. Second and 10 at the 19. Clarkson brings him up. Fake draw, fake swing, and he comes back the other side to Smalley, trying to get a block. He did get something of a block from Mau Mau Nico. A gain on the play of about six yards to the 25, where it will be. Third and five, let's call it third and four. If you're San Jose State, right now, you've got to get your composure back. Right now, they've kind of a little bit rattled. Stanford's come out, and they've got two real big touchdowns. They've got the lead. Now, gain your composure. Don't become impatient right now. You've got plenty of time, but get some composure. Get a first and ten or two. Here's that third down situation. Maybe the Spartans scored too easily those first couple of times. Clarkson is going to let it go. Intercepted. That ball is intercepted by Eric Trice. And Price is brought down by the intended receiver, number 19, Eric Richardson, at the 45-yard line. So the Cards taking advantage of a fumble and two interceptions. They you converted the first two to touchdowns. Let's take a look. You don't want to get impatient right there. He was throwing into very good coverage. He was throwing into the coverage, trying to force the ball. You don't want to do that. He was looking for Eric... Eric Richardson right here. See, you've got two men on. The ball has got to be so perfectly thrown, it's impossible. The throwing lanes were closed, so don't force the ball. Look somewhere else. Look at a different receiver. Look at a different side of the field. He did not do it. Cost him. Over and under coverage, Vaughn Williams playing the backup role in that defense. Dressel, the tight end on the left side. Elway is going to put it up again. He's not going to wait. Now he's going to run. He'll get about three or four yards. He's pulled down by Jesse Green, the nose guard. Jesse's a senior from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and there's Eric Price. Eric looks like he's having a good time here today. Eric is from Santa Ana, California. He is another Orange County product, a sophomore. He's an outstanding sophomore defensive backs in the Stanford crew. Eric Price is one. Darrell Grissom is another. Wayne Hamilton is a third one. Cards, second down. And six. Shotgun. Flag is up. Elway is in trouble. John may want to try and just get rid of this ball. He'll run it out of bounds for a gain of a yard or two, but the flag was down. Matheny chased him out of bounds. Got a penalty. Jack Gatto, the referee, you can hear him, indicating motion on the offense. Paul Wigan would like to get another score up on the board. 
That's how that hair cuts. See, no matter how you cut it, it still turns gray <laughs> in situations like this, Steve. On the offense, we got holding on the offense. Wig has been getting his hair cut like that from the same barber. The barber used to cut his hair when he was a student here from 1954 through 56. Newell is still a barber up at the Stanford Student Union, so when Wig came back, first thing he did was went and get, get an old crew cut, just like he had almost 30 years ago. That was the second procedure call. Oh, there are two, two flags on the play. Let's correct that. The NCAA Today on CBS continues with halftime scores and highlights after this word from your local station. Well, we're going to correct that. Got a little piece of the wrong information. We're going to have Brent Narrow right here with us at halftime. And what a great feature. If you saw the piece on Charlie Choo Choo Justice at halftime of the North Carolina Pittsburgh game, stay tuned and listen to what Red Grange has to say in his own words about the great game of college football. Elway and the shotgun. Elway, time. Now he gets surrounded. You can't stand there forever, John. He is finally brought down by Bobby Grant is in there. James Rowley also in attendance. Let's take a look. This is the blitz that caused Elway so much trouble a year ago when he was really playing on one leg with a badly sprained ankle. There's what, Bobby Grant. What makes it difficult for John in that situation is when you send your outside people rushing straight up the field, then John doesn't have the ability to scramble outside. He's got to go inside where all the people are. He prefers not to do that. When you break down outside is when John Elway hurts you because he'll break outside coverage. Stanford three for five and third down conversions. Now he's got a screen. Got a chance with this one. Vincent White. White is so elusive. Pursuit from the backside finally chased him down. But Vincent White, chased by Woodburn, number 95. 18 yards on the play. But that will bring up a fourth down. Still 11 yards short of the first. Break top is in. Tim Kearse is back. We've talked about Kearse doing everything, and he has done everything. Thrown for a touchdown, ran for a touchdown on the end of a pass, and he also returns punts. Pop, once again, not a deep punter, but he can be pretty accurate from this point. Good kick there. That one will go into the end zone and come back out to the 20. Touchback. And with 10.30 remaining in the second, Stanford leads 21-14. Punting uh, situation for Stanford is resolved at the 20-yard line with the touchback. The Spartans take over. Clarkson brings them up. Spartans now trailing 21 to 14, where they once had a 14 to nothing lead. Clarkson, Bobby Johnson is the man in motion. Smalley, no place to go. That play was absolutely jammed right at the line of scrimmage by Mike Wyman. Mike Wyman, a junior from Reno. Now we got some big news for you. It has just been announced, and you're the first to know that Nebraska and Penn State will be here right on your stations next week, 12.30 Pacific time. The Cornhuskers and the Nittany Lions. What a treat. Bobby Johnson in motion again. Clarkson. He's got Johnson. Johnson for the first down. Johnson up to the 35. Up by Price. Gain of 13 yards on the play. Johnson, the swing man, the man in motion that time, and uh, didn't appear that Price got to him soon enough, Steve. What San Jose State's offense does is that it's a quick hitting passing game, and they throw to areas. And if, if Steve Clarkson reads that someone is not in a particular area of coverage or the relationship to covering a back out of the backfield is not right, he'll go to him immediately. That's what he did on that play. Taylor and Kearse are wide right. Inside handoff to Smalley. Smalley for pretty good yardage. He'll get five or six before he's stopped across the way by Kevin Bates. Gary Wimmer, a junior from Boise, also in on the tackle. 
Gain of five yards on the play, where it'll be second and five. Oh, oh Nebraska, 68 Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Little punishment. You'll see Nebraska right here. Alabama, 42-14 over Ole Miss. Here, Bryant beat his old player, Steve Sloan. Second five situation as Clarkson brings him up. No tight end in this alignment. He's got three wide receivers, two on the right. Now he's got a man in motion. And now... He gives it to Johnson, picking his way. Bobby Johnson, a transfer from Monterey Peninsula Junior College, gets it up across midfield to the 49 or 48-yard line of Stanford. There is Coach Dave Baldwin coaching the receiver, sending Kenny Taylor into the game, and Jack Elway. Jack is just a delight. Told the defense, Claude Gilbert and his defensive staff, he said, I want you to stop that Stanford quarterback but don't tell me how you do it. I don't want to know how you do it. Just get the job done. Pretty tough assignment. Man in motion again is Johnson. Clarkson had a wide open receiver. He missed him, and then he came back to Tim Kearse. Kearse for the first down. The gain will be about 15 or 16 yards. Garen Varis, number 80, in on the stop. Garen, they're wondering at Ohio State. Stanford will take on Ohio State in Columbus next week. They're wondering how Garen ever got out of the state of Ohio. When Woody Hayes was there, he used to have the Border Patrol. Never let anybody get out of the state, Steve. Garen is from Chillicothe, Ohio, not far from Columbus. First down on the play, ball moves forward to the 33-yard line. Clarkson going with three wide receivers and no tight end. New look in the offense for San Jose State. Smalley jammed at the line of scrimmage. What a play by Ferris. Veras, a solid hitter, just a sophomore, and he's so big, Steve, 6'6 and 250. Well, that's one of the things that I think Stanford has been able to do is they are getting more physical, bigger people, and this defense is different than last year. Larry McDuff's the defensive coordinator, and one of the things that he's done is put a more aggressive, more attack-oriented uh, defense for Stanford, and it has really getting more and more where they're turnover-minded. Get the ball back to John Elway in the offense. Smalley, five carries for six yards. He's in motion. Johnson, the lone remaining back. Clarkson has trouble picking it up. Now he's got some time. And he's got a receiver. It can't fly through his hands. That ball might have been touched. We'll take another look, I would guess, at Vaughn Williams. And whether he got a fingertip on it or not would be a question, Steve. Well, let's see here. Everything was bobbled right here, and all the tempo was broken. Yeah, it was just a drop. He just pulled out too quickly. It probably didn't help the secondary much because they couldn't see the quarterback. If you can't see the quarterback, you don't know what's happening, whether to drop or cover your receivers. But uh, unfortunately, Kearse couldn't keep put the ball away. In fairness to Kearse, that ball might have just been barely ticked by Vaughn Williams. Third down conversion. San Jose is 0 for 2 in that department. They've got third and 10 at the 34. Johnson in motion. Clarkson, flag is thrown. Pursuit. Flag will go down as Clarkson throws. Ball is loose on the ground, almost intercepted by Baird. Eric Richardson, number 19, was the intended receiver. The clipping call was on. Well, we'll tell you that in a minute. There is really no excuse for that penalty. It was on Severance trying to give Clarkson a little bit more time. Offense, replay. Third down. Let's take another look. There's really no excuse for this. They only, first of all, Stanford only had a three-man rush. There's no sense that uh, Steve Clarkson had to be forced out of the pocket. Watch him right here. Here comes the clip. And, of course, Moronic is a smart player. He turned a little bit and drew the clip, I do believe, Steve. That little was acting. obviously a clip, but it, there was no sense in it because they had a three-man rush, and I'll be able to keep everybody out in front of them. Offside the other way, offsetting penalties. They'll play it over. Third and ten, so... The Spartans get a chance to convert to the first down once again. Clarkson goes back. Receivers all over the place. He's got trouble. Now he's going to run it. Almost to the first down. He lost it. The ball is loose. They give it to the Spartans, and they give it to the Spartans in, in the territory that would give them a first down. Let's take a look as they on pile. Steve, let's take a look at what happened to Tim Kearse on this play. Okay, he's a receiver, probably the primary receiver right here. Look at what happens. Well, 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 well. Let's grab hold of him a little bit, detain him. If you can't, if you can't cover him, just hold him. Garrett Ferris, number 80, was holding that time. 
and they were lucky. It takes luck in this ball game. You got to fumble right. Well, there was some luck going the other way. The penalty was not called, and Kearse was able to get the ball back. First down, Spartans ball on the 22. This is one that could tie it up. 21-14, the Cardinals. 6:30 remaining to the first half. Clarkson got a receiver. Smalling. They're not going to give him the catch, and if they had, he had certainly lost the ball. Matt Soderlund in on the stop. Soderlund from Boise. Two fine linebackers on this team from Boise, Idaho. Gary Wimmer, a senior, and Matt Soderlund, a sophomore. Both of them from Boise, and they play side by side in those two inside linebacker positions. San Jose State's put together a good drive here. They're maintaining the football. They have been fortunate. They've picked up a penalty. They've also got some luck on that fumble, but it has been a good drive, and they have been able to keep the ball away from John Elway and gain a little bit more confidence. Clarkson comes to the line 6 for 12 for 110 yards, second and 10 at the 22. He's got all kinds of wide receivers left. Art King is in the game now. We've got timeout. Jack Gatto calling a timeout down on the field. So with 6-19 left, Cardinal up on top, 21-19, 21-14. We come back with 619 remaining in the second quarter. Bob Murphy along with Steve Davis. The Spartans of San Jose State, second and 10 at the 22. Clarkson with three wide receivers to the left. Now he sends his only remaining back to the left. They're all over there with the exception of Richardson. Clarkson, pressure. Ball patted away, intended for Richardson at the goal line. Covering was Kevin Baird, number 48. And Kevin Bates, the big linebacker, was also back there dropping off in pass coverage. I don't like to be critical. But there's no reason this is happening. Steve Clark is not taking any more time than he needs to, but he's getting forced out of the pocket with a three-man rush. You've got to be able to throw the ball in that situation. There's going to be a tough little meeting tomorrow morning in the offensive line group, I would promise you. Third down conversions. San Jose one for three. Stanford is three for five in that department. It is third and ten at the 26. one of those yelling and screaming meetings. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, it seems like they've gotten away from that quick passing game a little bit in the last moment or two. Clarkson. He's got a receiver. It's Tim Kearse. Touchdown. 22 yards. in passing they've already thrown more in one game in the first half than I threw in my senior year <laughs> how about the other two years they'll surpass that before it's over too Bird puts this one up and sports fans it started off 14 to nothing it's now 21 21 and I know you're not going anywhere Steve, I don't know how you feel, but I feel like I've watched the whole season of football already. <laughs> this is incredible. Unbelievable. Donner, four or five yards deep. He'll bring it back. Loose with that football as Donner gets it back to the 26 or 27. Donner just a little careless with that ball bringing it out. Watch Kier. He's the return. inside man. He's going to split right down the area. He's in the open area, so he's going to sit down and try to catch the football exactly. The receivers are taught when they get to an open area, get there and set in it and, and catch the football. That sounds exactly what he did. He's a former high school quarterback and he reads coverages and that gives him a tremendous advantage as a receiver. He's caught two for touchdowns. He's also thrown for one touchdown. Eye formation. White at the top of the eye. Tight end on the right side. Wide receivers left side. This is White. Gets a block from Hooper inside that block for about four yards. Jesse Green in on the stop. There's the scoring drive. 11 plays, 80 yards. 21 yards officially. And the Marlboro Cup coming up from Belmont. Belmont Park in New York. I want you to stay tuned in this part of the world and watch the Marlboro Cup when this game is over. Tight end on the left side now. Harry moves up into a slot. Rob Moore, number 33, is in at fullback. This is Elway. Completion 
for the first down to Emil Harry. An absolute bullseye throw by Elway. Mike Maurer in on the coverage. Gil Bird also there. Gil Bird, a senior from San Francisco, has a broken bone in his hand. He's playing with a soft cast. He says it doesn't bother him. Clarkson is now 7 for 13 for 131 yards and two touchdowns. Just prior to that last throw, Elway was 13 for 15 for 241 yards and two touchdowns. And you can add that last one. First down for the card. Ball on the 42. Threw that one down and away from Tolliver. UCLA over Wisconsin. I get a chance to watch them play Michigan next week. I'm looking forward to that one. Folks in Southern California will be able to see that one. The Bruins. The Ohio State Buckeyes over Michigan State. Two losses in a row for Michigan State, losing to Illinois last week. The Buckeyes this week. We have Brett and Ara coming up with all the scores and highlights of games all over the country. At halftime, so don't go away. 21-21. Oliver is the man in motion. Shotgun. Elway. He's got a receiver. He's pulled back. Rob Moore. That ball, similar to the ball thrown to Tolliver just a little bit ago, off the mark, down and away. Coverage by Jesse Green, the linebacker, picking up the fullback. That may be the best way to defense John Elway. Is just sit back. There's the comparison of the two quarterbacks on today's little effort, a little, little bit of passing offense. But when you're trying to play John Elway, if you can get him off rhythm, make him do something that he doesn't like to do all the time. That time he's thrown two balls in the dirt because he was throwing off his rhythm, off his cadence. He was, cadence, he was moving around his feet, and they didn't throw the ball very well. We just saw a picture of Steve Clarkson from Wilson High School in Southern California. Have a timeout on the field. Interesting story about Clarkson. Clarkson and John Elway, both Los Angeles City Players of the Year. And Clarkson actually came to Jack Elway's attention through John, Steve. They played together in an All-Star game. He said, hey, Dad, I think you ought to take a look at this guy. He's taking a pretty good look at him, hasn't he? Certainly. Both, that's one of the things I've noticed about getting ready for this ball game is that both teams have a pretty good knowledge of each other because the, they read about themselves on the sports page, on the same page normally, and they have a sense of uh, presence of both teams. It's an interesting combination. Interesting series, too. We said that San Jose has only won five games, but those five games have been stories in themselves. Back in 1954, Tony Teresa ran wild for a Bob Bronson coach San Jose team. 1914, San Jose won that one, went on to a 7-3 season. In 1960, 34-20 for the Spartans. Bob Titchenell was the coach. 5-4 record for the Spartans. Johnny Johnson played on that team, and so did Jim Cadill, who was later to play 12 years with the Chicago Bears. 1971 was a blockbuster, 13-12. Rod Garcia missed four field goals in that game. He had one blocked, and you see Brent Nara coming up at halftime. We'll give you more on that game as we go along. Elway. Looks at Vincent White. He was covered. Now he's going to run it, and he's chased down from behind. That was Ken Woodburn in on the stop, chasing Elway. Elway trying to hit White. White was covered. Finishing that story, Garcia missed four field goals and had a fifth one blocked in that San Jose win, 13-12. And Stanford came back in the Rose Bowl later that year. The very same Garcia kicked a field goal that won the game over Michigan in the Rose Bowl by the very same score. 13-12. Ironic. Fourth down punting situation. Greg Top is back for the cards. Line of scrimmage is the 44-yard line. Top has punts of 28, 32, and 44. This will not go very far, but it will be reasonably effective going out of bounds at the 21-yard line. Tomorrow, the NFL Today kicks off a great day of doubleheader action. Check your local listings for the games in your area. Tomorrow on CBS Sports. Steve DeBerg, a former San Jose State Spartan, will start for the Denver Broncos. And, of course, I don't have to tell you who will start for San Francisco. A fellow by the name of Montana. 36-yard punt, out of bounds on the 21. Clarkson brings him up. Inside shuffle. It's an incomplete pass, Steve. You called that one about 10 minutes ago. All right. Tell you about another San Jose State win. That was in 1975. Darrell Rogers 
after getting a tie with the cards the previous year. The Spartans won that one in a track meet, kind of like we have today. 36-34, went on to a 9-2 season record. Carl Eckern is playing for the Rams now and has been ever since played in that game. Roger Prophet was the quarterback. Big Ron Collins was a linebacker in that game. Stanford, a 6-4-1 Stanford team, beat SC that year, 13-10. Clarkson. He's got Johnson in motion. Clarkson throws to Johnson. He's the swing man in motion, carrying it all the way through. There's a flag down on the play. Johnson has a chance. And suddenly he's chased down. There is a flag way back on the 21-yard line at the line of scrimmage. Gain of 43 yards on the play, but it will be brought back. Steve? Let me set this thing up a little bit. Here, watch Clarkson. Now, Johnson is coming out of the backfield. No one picks him up quickly. There's a lot of yardage in between him and where he's going, and Clarkson realizes that, so he drops the ball to him quickly. That's what makes this offense really interesting because if players aren't in the right area, you take advantage, and then he breaks, and he's running for nothing because there's the Offense, still second down. Well, that always frustrated me. I occasionally would break more than 10 yards, and I would get tired, and I would have to come back. Penalties, that's a pretty clean game to that. Second down, 15 to go at the 15. Into the game comes Nicholas, the tight end for San Jose. He comes in replacing number 22, Tony Smith. Wide receivers to the left. Pierce is in the wide slot. Second man through is Smalley. Great play by Garen Veras. Veras, a very solid football player. Veras from Chillicothe, Ohio, and the Cards also have another fine player from Ohio, Kevin Bates, the senior from Cincinnati. You know, I don't know what, I, sometimes I wonder why they call plays like that. I mean, to me, that was a nothing play. <laughs> it was just kind of resting to think, give the coaches time to think about what the next play was going to be because it went right in the strength of the Stanford defense and didn't give them anything. It gave them third and 12 when they had second and 15. Why don't you throw the ball down the field? Smalley, six carries for nine yards. Usually when you see Elway do something like that, Jack Elway we're talking about, He's usually trying to set something up. Let's see what he set up. And Clarkson calls timeout. Set up a timeout. Yeah, that's what he set up. <laughs> Isn't that true? <laughs> we were talking about the five games that have been won by the Spartans. The last one, of course, was the 28-6 game just a year ago when John Elway was only 6 for 24 for 72 yards. No touchdowns in that game, Steve. And he was knocked on his backside seven times. And John, of course... Uh, such an outstanding player and had a very bad ankle and you know he's never made an excuse for two reasons one because John Elway just doesn't make excuses and number two down deep I don't think he wants to take anything away from his father's victory that day uh, I, I think that's right they have a tremendous respect one of the neat things of my observation because I met John last year but this is my first time to meet Jack my impression is it's truly an all-American family I can't find in all my reading not that I was looking for it, I can't find one negative thing they're very special people how about that Stanford quarterback legacy going all the way back to 1940 and Frankie Albert when Stanford first came out in the white pants in the T formation. And since that time, Gary Kerkorian, who took the cards to the Rose Bowl in 1951. Behind him, Bobby Garrett won the NCAA passing championship. John Brody did the same thing. There's John. Jackie Douglas, very prominent real estate man in Southern California now, was a Davis Cup tennis player and also a great quarterback here on the farm. Dick Norman, another Stanford quarterback who won an NCAA passing championship. Dave Lewis, John Ralston's first great quarterback here in the early 1960s. Then a fellow by the name of Jim Plunkett, Don Bunce, Mike Perilla, Guy Benjamin, Steve Dills, Dirk Schoenert, and now John Elway. What a bunch of great ones. Clarkson. Clarkson was getting tremendous pressure that time from Kevin Bates, number 86. Bates breaking through, and I think Clarkson felt he had a receiver. Let's take a look, Steve. What's the penetration of the Stanford defense this time? Clarkson, a little bit of a fake inside to try to hold the linebackers, give him a little bit of a play-action look. He gets pressure from the outside. Bates forces him inside, keeps him inside. The ball was tipped, evidently, uh, close to the line of scrimmage and turned over. For the first time today, Mike Bird will punt for San Jose, and he gets a beauty off. That is a spiral that turns over and is taken on the 35-yard line by Vincent White. He is pursued and finally chased down across the way 
by number se uh, 62, Ken Office. Forty-seven yard punt for Berg, and that's the young man, Steve, we talked about earlier. He does all the kicking. Punting, the place kicking, the extra points, and the whole thing. Elway, you know what he's thinking about, no question about it. He's thinking about getting a score on the board so that Stanford could lead this contest at halftime. After trailing 14 to nothing, they've got it tied at 21 apiece. Elway. He's got Vincent White. The ball was hit and fumbled. And they will give him the reception, and they will also give him the fumble recovery. Ken Woodburn, number 95. The hit was made by Hawkins. The recovery was made by Woodburn, the senior from La Mirada, California. Got a flag. And we've got a flag down. And we will have to wait. I was a little bit surprised that the reception was allowed. But the Stanford defense is certainly in there. Decline. Obviously declined. First down. Okay. Now, Steve Clarkson comes out. He's got the same thought in his mind with 2.14 left in this first half. 21 apiece. Let's get the lead at halftime, and maybe the coach won't get too emotional. <laughs> Smalley in motion. Out to Smalley. He is covered by a bunch of red shirts. Tom Briel, number 90 in on the stop. There are a bunch of them there. They're trying to get a little help to untangle one another. John Bergren. An academic All-American a year ago from South Bend, Indiana. I don't know how a guy 6'5 and 240 gets ever out of the city limits in South Bend. looked like he called a Stanford defensive team meeting at that tackle. <laughs> yeah, there was sure everybody did. there. He really did. No huddle. They're going. Art King is in number nine. Johnson in motion. No tight end. Nickel defense for the card. Look at that Johnson. Johnson, the man in motion, they just are not going to pick him up. That's the third pass he's caught that way. He might have been moving forward. I don't see a flag, but he uh, looked like he was getting forward in a hurry, doesn't he? Of course, they're in their two-minute drill, trying to throw the ball, not going to huddle, and they're not going to give Stanford a time to regroup their defense. Throw it out of bounds is what he's trying to do, get the ball to receiver and then step out of bounds. But the ball extends Johnson, and he has to go uh, to the turf, and he stays inbounds and starts the clock running. Here. One for four in third down conversions. It is third and one at the 44. Clarkson, he'll throw third and one, why not? He puts it up and gives Kearse a chance to run underneath it, but he can't run out of bounds and catch it. Fourth and one. Kevin Baird on the coverage. There's Clarkson. Now what do you think? Bird could get the foot in the ball, but it would be awfully long from there. You're talking about a 61 yarder. I don't think so. The wind is a crosswind from his left to right. Yeah, but fourth and one. You right here with 51 seconds. You got to go for the ball. You can't. You can't kick field goal here. How about three points? How about putting it in the air? Right how yeah. about putting it in the air? What do you think of fourth and one? Bob has got Richardson wide left. Draw. Art King gets the first down. Gets up across the 40. Down to the 38-yard line for the first down. That's right. What do we know? <laughs> Gain of six yards on the play for King. And if you little guys think you can't play football, take a look at Art King. He's 5'8 and 165 pounds. He's got a heart as big as a lion. He's a junior from Long Beach. He's calling the play right now. Now it's called. And everybody's gone. King is in motion. Nobody left behind Clarkson. Clarkson pressure. Clarkson can run away from that pressure. He does a little juke move on Kevin Bates. He did not get out of bounds, but he stopped the clock with the first down. Right. Made uh, about 11 yards on the play, just enough to stop the clock. That's vital right now with 30 seconds left. Right. Watch Clarkson. He's calling out. He's already got the play called. He's already called him. Now he's got the, his team on the line of scrimmage. When they start the clock, he'll be ready to go. They'll start the clock when the line sticks get set. He's calling the play right now. 25 seconds. Clarkson. Richardson came back inside. What a mistake. Richardson caught the pass. Clarkson might even have been trying to throw it away over there. And he came back inside, and the clock continues to run. They're down to 10. No timeouts left. 
I don't know that they're going to make it three. They've still got players on the field. This will not count. The kick looks pretty good. Wide left. Kick is wide left as time runs out. And our halftime score, 21-21. Oh, boy. Are you tired, Steve? Oh, no, I'm not tired. <laughs> what a track meet this has been. Tim Kearse throwing for one touchdown, catching two. Stanford coming back from down 14 to tie it at 21 apiece. It's not halftime, gang. <laughs> now it is. Now it is. Okay. They're going to leave. San Jose did not get all their people off. And NCAA Today on CBS continues with halftime scores and highlights after this word from your local station. The preceding message was provided by the NCAA. Welcome back to New York. I'm Brent Musburger with Aaron Parsega to coach. You were drooling watching John Elway throw that ball. Hey, you bet. I may come out of retirement watching it. He's terrific. He's really got a great arm, great poise. He's, gonna, he's a great one, and, and, and he will be without question a Heisman candidate. We have an unbelievable story. A final score, and this is accurate, Rhode Island over Maine in the Yankee Conference, 58-55, and that's just the beginning of this story. Six overtimes they played in that contest. It was 21 all at the end of regulation. Errol, will you explain that to me? <laughs> Can you believe this? Anyway, the Yankee Conference has a new rule for overtimes. They allow each team, if the game ends in a tie, to start at the 15-yard line, their own 15. They have eight plays to try to score. Obviously, they did. Now, if they scored, the opposition gets the ball at their own 15. They get to go for eight plays. Well, that thing went back and forth until finally someone kicked the field goal and then the other team came back and, and uh, scored a touchdown. Maine <laughs> got the field goal, Rhode Island wins it with a touchdown. Now, elsewhere this afternoon, Northwestern has lost again, so the longest losing streak now in NCAA history has reached 34. They are down by Miami of Ohio, 27 to 13. Next for the Wildcats, Northern Illinois. Nebraska over New Mexico State, 68 to nothing. The Huskers rolled up 883 total offensive yards. That is a single game record today. Alabama and the Bears shoot down Mississippi, 42 to 14 was the final. And the Bear now has beaten one of his former pupils 28 straight times. And Penn State a winner, 49 to 14 over Rutgers. Next for Penn State, of course, will be Nebraska. That's our network game here on CBS. North Carolina trying to rebound after that disappointing performance against Pittsburgh. Downs Vanderbilt, 34-10. Kelvin Bryant's ankle injury. We have checked. It is not serious. He missed most of the game. The Tar Heels hope he will be able to play next weekend. Ohio State over Michigan State in the Big Ten, 31-10. And UCLA with an easy time of it again against Wisconsin, 51-26. Tom Ramsey threw for a pair of touchdowns in that game and ran for two more for the Bruins. And the Miami Hurricanes lose their brilliant quarterback, Jim Kelly, and then hold on against Virginia Tech, 14-8. Kelly may have suffered a separated shoulder in that game. We've got some highlights of this next contest for you. It was one of our regional games today. Death Valley, Clemson, what a performance Boston College turned in. Here is, of course, the big bull. Chuck McSwain in for, how do you like that look of the refs, huh? It was that warm, and then BC came back. Here's a double fumble here by Troy Stratford. There's a score, but it's very close. Watch this. He fumbles right at the goal line. The officials rule touchdown, and they go, they get the first score. How about Doug Flutie bringing back BC? I'll tell you, he demonstrated our thoughts about him. He had a great game against Texas A&M again here. And here is Donald Igwebuike out of Nigeria. And I hope I pronounced that correctly. He had missed the field goal there with time running out for Clemson. And so they settled for a 17 all time. Maryland and West Virginia, the Mountaineers a week ago went into Norman, Oklahoma and stunned OU. And then today they are in the dark jerseys here. And Jeff Hostetler was called for intentionally grounding the ball. That is a safety. And the Mountaineer not too pleased, but he still hammed it up with the camera. And then back came the Terrapins. Esaias and the quarterback for Maryland. There's a penalty on the play, interference. And here's Esaias in here pitching the ball out to Boomer somebody. <laughs> anyway, they get the score in there. And here's the play that really made the difference in the game. He goes for two points. You can see that West Virginia covers it well. Esaias and throws the ball in a hope and pray job. Didn't get it. Final score was 19-18, a whale of a ball game. Here's one of your former favorite teams. The Trojans of Southern California are rolling it up on Indiana right now. It is 28 to nothing at the half. And the NCAA today will continue on CBS in just a moment.
progress now out west that I know everyone along the Pacific Network is interested in. Oregon right now losing to Fresno State. It is 10-0 in that game, and they are at the half of that contest. California and Joe Cab, they're doing it again. 21-0 over San Diego State right now in the third. Hawaii leading Colorado State by three, 16-13. Wyoming has come back against Long Beach State, and now the Cowboys lead at 21-14. They are in the fourth quarter of that game. Utah State over Weber State by seven. They are in the fourth quarter there, too. And Montana, the Grizzlies, are up by seven on Puget Sound, 10-3. Meanwhile, Montana State playing in Bozeman. They lead 24-17 over Eastern Washington. Illinois in the Big Ten had an easy time of it against Syracuse, 47-10. They're going to be very much in the Rose Bowl picture. And Oklahoma comes back after losing to West Virginia. They down Kentucky, 29-8. Minnesota over Purdue, 36-10 was the final there. Iowa State rallies to down Iowa in the Battle of that state, 19-7 the final. And Kansas over TCU, 30-19. Era tonight, Washington and Don James down in Tucson trying to Hold up to that number one ranking. Can he get the job done there? Well, it's going to be a tough ball game. I don't like to be number one at this stage of the season, obviously, and I know that James doesn't either because it doesn't mean anything. But playing in Tucson against a team, Arizona, which beat Southern Cal last year, also beat Stanford, is a dangerous thing. I'll tell you, it, they'll be hard-pressed. All right, Coach, we're going to hear from one of the greatest who ever played this game. In their own words, is coming up, and it'll be Red Grange. And we'll hear from the Redhead as the NCAA Today continues on CBS in just a moment. <laughs> a small business computer is a lot like getting married. You should be sure your new partner comes from a good family, knows your business, and can grow with you. Introducing the Burroughs B20 Small Business Computer. It has programs for your business and expands as you do. Burroughs grew up with small business, so talk to your computer dealer about Burroughs' new B20. Happy? After a night below freezing, after three hours with the lights on, after all these years, people still have more confidence in Sears Die Hard than any other battery in America. And for the same kind of confidence, Sears will install the muzzler muffler for $24.99 within 60 minutes of your authorization. One hour or the muzzler labor is free. At Sears Tire and Auto Centers, we install confidence. You can count on Sears. The NCAA Today continues with In Their Own Words, sponsored by Holiday Inn Hotel. Era, there was a legendary running back out of Illinois who will never be forgotten. <laughs> That's right, Brent. They call him the Galloping Ghost and the Wheat and Ice Man. He was Red Grange of the University of Illinois, the most celebrated college player of the sports-hungry 1920s. In a route of Michigan, he scored four long-run first-quarter touchdowns the only times he carried the ball, then added a fifth for good measure. Immediately after his final college game, Grange signed with the Chicago Bears, played eight games in 12 days, earning $100,000, and breathed new life into the struggling pro game. Now 80 and retired in Florida, Red Grange remembers. <laughs> I never have accepted the fact that I'm a superstar. I don't really know what a superstar means. I've had a lot of advantages. Uh, football has been awfully good to me. It has opened a lot of doors. It has done a lot. Everything I have today, I can look back and say I accomplished it because of football. Along with blocking and tackling, believe me, the most important part of football is confidence. You have to believe in yourself and believe you can do it. When you score a touchdown, when you make this good, you do it because the other guys made you look good. Football is a team sport. I've often said if you want special acclaim, play tennis or golf or something where it's one person. Don't play a team sport. I would like to see every, every young fella in America have the opportunity to play football. Now, by that, I don't mean that he has to be a big star, he has to make a team. Just go out for football. Get the knocks, get the bumps, get the pats on the back, get the kicks once in a while. I think it does everybody good. You take, uh, you win without going around blowing up about it and bragging about it, and you can lose without crying about it. 
and you say, well, let's start all over again. I think that's very important to this country. Era, he stresses confidence more than ability. One of the key things which I think are important, he said one other thing, humility. Those two things take you a long way. That's probably why he's 80. Uh, nice to hear <laughs> from the former great stars in their own words, as we will all year long. And the NCAA Today continues on CBS in just a moment. Hello again, everybody. Bob Murphy along with Steve Davis. Halftime, Stanford Stadium. Rather unbelievable ball game with San Jose jumping up on top 14 to nothing. Stanford coming back, and we have a tie now. 21 apiece at the half. The total offense is just incredible. Most of that total offense belongs to John Elway, Steve. Really has been an interesting football game. Of course, it was, it was rather predictable when it came in. We thought that we had an opportunity to have two great throwing teams, and that's exactly what we've got. We don't have a whole lot of defense right now, but it's <laughs> they're trying, though. great talent on both the offensive sides of the field. It's not because they're not trying. It's uh, quite a football game from the standpoint of coming back. Tim Kearse we talked about at the opening of the show, and Kearse, number one, first throwing for a touchdown and then coming back to uh, catch a couple, and it's 21 apiece. And now let's take a closer look at the two universities, Stanford and San Jose State. San Jose State University, California's oldest public university, is located in the heart of one of America's fastest growing major cities. San Jose State's mission has expanded from teacher education to supporting Silicon Valley, the focus of American high technology research and development. San Jose State's 130,000 graduates have made outstanding contributions to education, business and industry, as well as human services, science and the arts. San Jose State University, excellent since 1857. I think, first of all, the privilege of coming here and, and to participate in athletics. You know, I, I, that, was, that was a big goal for me to play college athletics. The second was the magnitude of the education that you receive uh, here at Stanford University. I think the third thing was, uh, was the social part of it, because I think what they provide for you here at Stanford is an opportunity to be yourself. You're not locked into an athletic dorm and that kind of thing, but you're in your own world and you... You kind of live your own life, and you grow on your own terms, and I think that's probably one of the great assets. When you put all three of those parts together, I think that's a true education that you can get here at Stanford. Well, if you don't recognize uh, that rather incredible group, that's the Leland Stanford Junior University marching band <laughs> and you know about them don't you yeah they do a little thing different that's all i was to do last year and they just were told to leave on wednesday night and show up on saturday <laughs> <laughs> all right highlights are coming up now we have six touchdowns in this ball game san jose of course had the first two stanford came back with a couple this is tim kearse number one throwing for tony smith steve it really was a great play charles hutchin number 46 was not doing a very good job of defending here it is again, Clarkson number seven, again to Kearse, another 53, a 53 yard touchdown, just split the zone right down the middle. Elway to White, it'll be a 45 yard touchdown, golly, just touchdowns left and right. Here's an interception, Clarkson's gonna be throwing across the middle, this is the situation, no, this is, a, no, this is not the interception, this is a fumble recovery, there it is. There's a short TD by White, that was in the first quarter. There's the interception right there, the tip, look, the little tip drill, back and forth. Here's Elway's touchdown. Boy, that's just amazing, touchdowns everywhere you look. Across <laughs> the middle again to Emil Harris, a 48-yard touchdown. And here's the last touchdown. Here's, again, just what they're doing is Clarkson is being able to hit so much, so often, right in those zone areas and making a real uh, tough time on the defensive secondary. Kearse throw for one and catching two. He sort of figured big in this game, hadn't he? Well, he's a great football player. Of course, we've got a lot of talent when you think of Clarkson, Elway, Kearse. There are some great people playing the football with us. What about those coaches? I just wonder what they're talking about. It's 21-21 right here in Stanford Stadium. Stay with us. CBS Sports coverage of today's game is sponsored by Mazda and the full line of sophisticated Mazda products. Honeywell, you should see what we do with computers. And by improved Press On 2 Antifreeze, it locks out rust and corrosion. I don't have any problems. 
Here we are again, the Stanford Dollies. They call those pom-pom girls the Dollies here on the Stanford campus. And we are just about ready to go. San Jose is out on the field. They will kick off from our right to left. Stanford will receive. And if the first half uh, set a pace for this game that follows through in the second half, it's going to wear you out. Let's take a look at some statistics. Mark Harmon, the kicker, number eight, as you see right there. Very close in all uh, categories. Of course, look at the highlighted area there in the yards. Uh, 256, 225. I think one interesting point is San Jose State has stopped themselves a little bit more than Stanford with the three turnovers, and Stanford has been able to keep the football, so it's been uh, an interesting statistical football game. I think a couple things got to happen. San Jose State needs to get back to their game plan, stay with what they, uh, how they came to this football game. The kicker will be Harmon. Deep will be Kearse and Taylor. Kearse number one and Taylor 25, and the second half is underway. This one will be kicked away from Taylor. And that one will come back out to the 20. Well, those first two, there's John Elway getting ready to come back into this game, hoping that his defense can hold them. Let's take a look at these lineups again. This is the way they started, and we'll catch the changes for you as we go along. Clarkson is the quarterback. Number 44, Dave Criswell, is in the game at fullback now for the Spartans. This is the first action for Criswell. The tight end, Nicholas, is split wide left. Two wide receivers on the right side. And in motion is Johnson. A little shuffle pass to Criswell, hit by Soderlund. Gain of about two or three. Bergeron also in there. Here's the defensive defense. line. They were able to get to Clarkson a little bit in the first half of this football game. Jackson's been a good player in the first half. There are the linebackers. Garris has had a good first half. Sutherland, Wimmer, and Bates. They have got to continue to put pressure. And there's the secondary. They've been beaten a little bit, but it's because uh, when they, they have broken down inside in the defensive line, it's because uh, put not enough pressure on uh, young Clarkson. Eight of two on the last play. Second and eight of 22. Clarkson. Pierce on the inside handoff. Trying to find some daylight. Stanford shut him off. Kevin Baird coming up from the defensive secondary to turn Kearse inside. Rather brave move considering that Kearse put that ball in the air earlier this afternoon for a touchdown. Bergeron in on the stop, number 85. That's the big guy from South Bend, Indiana. San Jose State came into the football game thinking that because Stanford was a hard-charging defensive football team that they might be able to take advantage of them inside, that they would run by the larger, uh, quicker uh, defensive line of, of Stanford, much quicker and uh, bigger than the Oregon team they faced last week. Loss of a yard on the last play, 21-yard line. Clarkson, he's got a receiver. That ball picked up by Nicholas, the tight end, and it's good enough for the first down. Gain of 12 yards on the play. Nicholas, the tight end. They have not found him often today, but Nicholas caught it when they really needed one. They say Nicholas really is pretty much an average tight end, but what he does is he does his job very well. He always gets it done when he has to. That time he just came across the middle. Steve Clarkson set up, took his time, looked at all areas of the field and threw the ball. There's a comparison of the two quarterbacks today. Elway slowed down a little bit in the second quarter because he didn't have the football as much. First and 10 at the 35. Man in motion is Johnson. Picked up by Wimmer. This is Richardson. A collision with Eric Price on the completion. It'll be short of a first down. The ball is about at the 44, a gain of nine yards on the play. It'll be second down and a yard. That's what the San Jose State offense will do. They will take advantage, as I said earlier, they will take advantage of an area where people are not reacting quick enough to the receiver. And he just looks, he'll take that five yard gain every time, just throw that quick slant. If no one shows on the uh, receiver, they're defending. Mitchell, Jackson, and Bergeron across the front for the cards. Man in motion with Johnson for San Jose. Quarterback sneak, Clarkson's got it. You made an interesting point on Clarkson. I can remember a year or two ago when he was playing at about 235 pounds, and he is not the same Steve Clarkson. I don't think he's lost any of his strength, but boy, he's picked up some quickness with the loss of almost 40 pounds. He was a 5'2 in the 40, which is the uh, lineman speed, and he reduced it down to 4'8". He's a smart kid. He's young. He's only 20 years old. He's a senior. He came to school when he's 16 and a half. Clarkson's carried four times for 25 yards. Here he is back to throw. He's got some pressure. 
He's got a lot of pressure now. Bates slowed him up. And then he got a little help from Jackson. Garen Varis was also there. Let's take another look, Steve. Watch Clarkson drop back. <laughs> this is one you just want to keep dropping back. In fact, you'd like to call timeout right about here. He realized he can't go anywhere, and this is great defensive play. The outside people, Bates and Varis, are forcing him deeper and deeper and keeping outside, so he's got to stay inside. Excellent defensive play by the defensive ends or outside linebackers. It's second down and 24. Loss of 14 yards on the play. Kearse is in the slot. Criswell is the man in motion. Pressure, split situation, and Clarkson simply unloaded it. He had Bates coming from one side and Varus from the other. The two corner linebackers giving him a lot of pressure. He read it very quickly and just dumped it off. Not that I ever had to worry about the blitz at Oklahoma, but <laughs> there are two ways you take advantage of it. One, you try to throw that balloon ball deep on, yeah. uh, on splitting the halves deep because they're out there in the secondary, or you drop it off to a halfback uh, somewhere close to you. And that time he threw it deep, and of course it was a throwaway. San Jose, three for five in the third down, three for seven, rather, in the third down conversion department. The odds are not good on this one. Third and 24. Cruz well man in motion. Draw play. That will not get the first down, obviously, but it'll improve the punting situation a little bit as the ball comes up to the 40. That was Johnson, the ball carrier, on the draw play. Varis and Price among others in on the stop and Mike Bird comes in to punt Berg has punted only once today a 47 yarder a beauty line of scrimmage is the 40 kind of a wobbly kick takes a very neutral bounce and now it bounces against San Jose the yardage on this will not be good the ball is at the 35 change the possession Stanford will come back this one's still tied 21 apiece Hello again, everybody. Bob Murphy along with Steve Davis. An interesting statistic, Steve. Jack Marg, our statistician, comes up with all kinds of interesting things, and this is of interest. Stanford, average yardage per first down play, seven yards per play. San Jose, only 2.3. Let's take a look and see what the card, the Cardinal, does right here. Whistle, too much time. John Elway having just a little bit of trouble from time to time, getting the Cardinal team up and ready to go. Again, San Jose State is doing exactly what their game plan was early in the ballgame. They got away from it in the second quarter, but they're giving John Elway, they're playing on his intelligence. I think it's a neat concept. They, they realize he's an intelligent player, so they're going to say, John, we're going to make you look at a lot of different things as the referee gives us the signal. Illegal procedure, there you go. But they're giving a different look, and he's got to use his intelligence, change the call, and then they drop out of it, and then he's got to react to that situation and probably throw a pass he does not prefer to throw. First and 15 at the 31-yard line. No way has him up. He's got Tolliver split wide right. Looking for Tolliver. Can't get free. Good coverage by Bird. Secondary receiver on the play was Dressel. And they're not going to give him the completion. He really wanted to get Tolliver, but Bird had him covered like a blanket right in front of the San Jose State bench. He came off to the secondary receiver, Dressel, and he trapped him. John Elway is a fierce competitor. This reaction when the ball, it was there, it was low. He knew he threw not as good a pass. He says, oh, man, I could have thrown it a little <laughs> higher. That should have been, I should complete those. That's what he's thinking. The competitor thinks that way, and that's the kind of kid John Elway is. There's Dad thinking, boy, I'm glad he didn't complete it. I think he felt particularly bad because he had plenty of time. Tight end on the right side. Wide receivers both ways. Shotgun, Elway. Trying to find a receiver. Flag down, probably holding. Elway running. He saw the flag. He may have lost a little energy on this play when he saw that flag go down. He still got chased down, and I don't know that he wanted to take that loss. Number 99, Jesse Green, the nose guard, chased him all the way across the field. The flag was thrown right in Elway's face. He knew that the flag had gone up, Steve, and as a quarterback, doesn't that uh, kind of serve to be disconcerting? you got to play in motion. You know that nothing good can happen. That's right, and of course, you don't want to do something stupid. Uh, and that's you know, he tried to run outside. There's uh, young Jesse Green. He got a little justice on John Elway, kind of roughed him up a little bit. They're talking to Gil Bird, one of the captains here, is the captain for the defensive team. Dan Severance, the captain for the offensive team. And Mike Maurer, the captain for the special teams for San Jose. 
Not sure that we gave you those captains earlier. Captains for Stanford today are Vincent White, Vaughn Williams, and Chris Monson. John Elway, kind of interesting as a freshman. Steve, you and I talked about this before we went on the air today. Coach Rod Dauhauer at that time at Stanford started the 1979 season with the idea that John Elway would share time with Turk Schoenert. But you know, Elway got hurt in this game against his father the first time they met head and head. He injured his ankle. Mau Mau Nico, who's now an offensive guard, was a nose guard at the time. He fell on John's ankle. John played rather sparingly through that year, and Turk Schoenert went on to win the NCAA passing championship. So Stanford always seems to have a quarterback around. It is second down and 25. Ball all the way back to the 21-yard line now. Elway, lots of time, plenty of time. Got a wide receiver. He's got a chance. Beautiful play by Brian Hawkins. It looked for a moment like Harry might get out in front of the defense. Back there was Cockroft, but it was Hawkins number 32 coming across, Steve. Harry, usually a wide receiver, he's in there kind of tight, maybe trying to be a little more deceptive. He just goes right down the middle. He's going to try to split the two deep. This time, Hawkins is going to come into your screen, number 32, right there. The ball is thrown behind him. Of course, John threw it about 55 yards, but still, Hawkins did make a good recovery. He's a free safety. He's reacting to the ball and playing kind of a deep center field. Third and 25, not the kind of play you really like to call down in your own territory. The ball at the 21-yard line. Wide receivers on the right side. Oliver is at, on the left side, shotgun. Flag down again, and they'll stop this play. Can you imagine if John Elway had played that first year, Steve, what kind of numbers he'd have in that record book now? Well, of course, if, 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 if. you can always speculate, but uh, John Elway really is a, just a phenomenal player. You know, another interesting thing about this Stanford San Jose series that goes all the way back 82 years to 1900, the call by Jack Gatto, the referee. People like Pop Warner, who coached at Stanford, the legendary Pop Warner, was later an advisory coach at San Jose. Ben Winkleman, one of his assistants, became a head coach. Dud DeGroote, one of his great players, was a coach at San Jose later. Honey Hartramps, a great football player and track man here, later became a football coach and athletic director at San Jose. Elway. Lots of time. Wide open receiver, Mullen. He might have the first down. It's going to be very close. I think he's got it. Incredible. Elway, who would ever give him any kind of odds? 37-yard gain on the play. First down, Cardinal. The difference between Stanford this year and last year is that offensive line. Deaton, Moran, Tevis, Engel, and Rose gave John Elway plenty of time. Watch him this time. Elway will have all afternoon to look to make the play. Watch him. He's going to look for Mullins, 23. He's set. One, two, three, four, five seconds. And puts it right there where it's got to be. Plenty of time. The gain is 31. 31 yards for the first down. Harry moves up into that tight end position. Dotterer is now in the game for the card. Elway. Yes, he's got Dressel. I don't know whether they're going to call him down or not. Cockroft hit Dressel. And whether he had a knee down or not will be a question. Elway didn't like the call. Whatever happened, but they... Let's take the, a look at the end of that, Steve. Let's see what tight end Dressel, number 88. Let's look and see if he puts a knee down. There's the ball, yeah. Well, we can't tell from that particular angle. No, it was covered up by Woodburn, number 95. We couldn't see that right knee. Woodburn recovers to make the final stop. No question about that one. It's second down and three. Ball is on the San Jose 46. Elway with his hand on the throttle. Dotterer. Short of the first down. Steve? I'm a, I made a comment, what, John Elway, that he's a phenomenon, that he really is a, a unique, gifted player as we look at his stats. What makes him a great player is the fact that I think there are a lot of great passers in college football today. There are a bunch of them. Jim Kelly, Dan Marino, uh, Tony, uh, you know, they're just all over the place, great players. But I think what separates him, what he does when he can't throw, when he runs and puts pressure on defenses, and that's what the pros and everybody else talks about, his ability to do something with the ball other than just throw. Third and two. Play action pass. He had some receivers covered. He came off the dressel. He'll get the first down. 
secondary receiver once again tried to get a little help from Vincent White. Cockroft was over there, Woodburn was over there, and Gil Bird, the primary coverage man, the great cornerback for the Spartans. Elway clearly looking for someone other than Dressel, but coming off to his tight end. The player I was trying to mention when I said Tony is Tony Easton of Illinois. There might be some <laughs> Illinois fan <laughs> fighting line out there to call me, but no, Tony Easton's a great quarterback. What a matchup. Next week, Easton and Marino go head and head. It is first and ten at the 35. And in motion is Tolliver. Showing blitz. Away again. He's got time. Short completion. Short completion. Short of the first down. Harry goes down. I wonder if He's hurt, I hope not. Now look at John Elway. He's a little bit frustrated that time. The reason is San Jose State showed blitz. Then John changed the play at the line of scrimmage, and he was going to try to go inside right where the linebackers, had they blitzed, would have been vacated. It would have been a clear area. So they're playing on his intelligence. That's the point the coaches were trying to take advantage of. Utilize the strength of John Elway, and that time the linebackers dropped back, and they were there, and yet John threw into that area because he, in his mind, had it thinking that that's where I need to throw. That put Elway over the 300-yard mark, 308 to be exact. 7-13 remaining in the third quarter. This is Dutterer. He's got some room. Mike Dutterer. Outstanding baseball prospect. His dad was a Major League Baseball player, Dutch Dutterer. Dutterer limping noticeably now as he comes up. Stop made by Zorowski and LaCarter Washington. Zorowski, 76. LaCarter Washington, a junior from San Diego. Zorowski a junior from Atwater, California, over in the Great Central Valley. Sharon Crawford, a longtime Stanford booster, made an emergency trip to Stanford Hospital this week, and we hope she's okay. 21-21. This one is deadlocked. We'll be right back. The injured player for San Jose State, Dmitry Zarovsky, looked like they were looking at his hip first and then later his knee. Hope that Dmitry is okay, and I'm sure all the folks over at Waterway feel the same way. Four for eight in the third down conversion department for the Cardinal. Elway just simply lost the ball. It was fallen on. Almost left that one for the Spartans to grab. The fullback, Rob Moore, very alertly jumped on that one. Jesse Green would have been there to get it for San Jose, the nose guard. And that leaves a very questionable fourth down situation. Okay, Steve, call your own plays. That's what you wanted to do at Oklahoma. Call this one. <laughs> and they're going to kick a field goal. That's the best call right now. Okay. Unfortunately, they didn't get a chance at third down. That's a costly mistake right there. Harmon has reached it from 59 yards. This will be a 46-yard attempt. He's got plenty of leg. It's good. The Cardinals, with a 46-yard field goal by Mark Harmon, have gone up on top by a score of 24-21. This was a long way from being over. A 46-yard field goal by Mark Harmon has Stanford up on top, 24-21. And the very same Harmon kicking off now. Taken at the goal line by Taylor. Taylor trying to pick his way. Baird will chase him down across the way at the 27-28 yard line. A flag on the play. Flag was thrown. Almost surely a clipping penalty. We'll have to wait for that, Steve, but that almost always means a clip in a kickoff situation. It's still early in the season, and of course, you're trying to get all your offense, offense in. Personal foul. We hear personal foul in our headsets, and I suppose you heard that at home also. The flag was thrown well behind and away from the ball. Let's we'll see if we can find it here for you. Referee is Jack Gatto, a PCAA official. I'm told to look at the lower right hand. There it is. Number 92 is getting clipped, or at least uh, some attempt to block him from the backside was evident. And that is a clip. Number 92, David Wyman. A truly outstanding freshman here. I say, yeah, he's blocking below the waist. Not a clip. I should have known that. He didn't give the signal for a clip. I anticipated that, Bob. I shouldn't have done that. Two good players from Reno. Mike Wyman, a junior, and his brother David, a freshman. Clarkson tight end on the right side. Quick pass. Quick pass to Smalley, and he's got some room. Smalley is finally 
pushed out of bounds across the way by number 89, Don Stubblefield. Another flag down. This one is way back. Was thrown by the line judge. And we'll have to wait. San Jose, obviously, the team to be penalized. Looks like a motion penalty against San Jose. They're going to lose a big gainer there. It is very uh, difficult to understand the kind of pressure that Clarkson is under when, as, when he's throwing the ball on that kind of timing. We'll see the penalty. But he is throwing the ball so quickly because he's reading almost immediately what the secondary does, an illegal shift. But he's reading the secondary so quickly and then throwing the ball to the open area. I mean, Smalley was out there by himself. From a quarterbacking standpoint, Steve, what an emotional change that is from a big gainer that gets you right back in the ball game. You can get a touchdown on there. There's Jack Elway to a penalty that takes you all the way back to your own eight-yard eight line. Clarkson, Pierce, he's not going to throw. He's going to run. Hit by Wimmer. Not much gain on that. Wimmer on the stop. Penn State, 49. Rutgers, 14. Penn State, you get a chance to see next week. Todd Blackwich has a big game that day. 40, 14 easy today. Miami of Florida, 14 to 8 over Virginia Tech. Jim Kelly, another Heisman Trophy candidate down there playing well for Howard Schnellenberger. The fine young, well, not young necessarily, good coaches, excellent coaches. There you see Steve Clarkland. Clarkson today as he brings the Spartans up. Tight end on the right side, wide receivers on the left. That ball bounced to Smalley. No chance, and he was jostled ever so gently by Garen Verris and Charles Hutchings. No completion. Jack Elway showing a little concern. He goes back into those play cards. I guarantee you he's got a few trickers in there we haven't seen yet, Steve. He really does. Boy, I like the way they run their offense, though. They really ask their quarterback to do a lot. And, you know, Coach Elway is such a neat guy. As a dad, he would be, he'd be he's tough. He's tough on John. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Pierce, two rushes for seven yards, four receptions for 115. And, of course, he threw an 84-yard touchdown pass. What a day for him. Clarkson trying to find a receiver. Oh, almost intercepted by Kevin Baird. The receiver, the intended receiver, was Taylor. But Baird cutting across from the blind side. I'm not sure that Clarkson ever saw him. That's right. If you're going to be right as a defensive back, Kevin Baird, number 48, you better be or you're going to be talked about tomorrow morning in the papers right across the middle. That is a risky play, but that's an excellent throw, and that's a great defensive play. You just got to knock the ball away. Berg, the punter. They're kept right at the 50 by Vincent White. And the cards are up on top, 24-21. Don't go anywhere. This one's not over. A 36-yard punt by Mike Berg, and, er, uh, Mike Berg and the fair catch by Vincent White right at midfield. The ball is squarely on the 50. That's where Stanford and John Elway will take over. There you see our score. San Jose with plenty left in their arsenal. But the, the Cardinal, they have the ball right now. And Elway, the Heisman Trophy candidate, he's the quarterback. A deep eye formation, Vincent White. And White gets it. Look at the throwback play. It's a flea flicker. Elway trying to find some time. Now he's got a lot of time, and he's got a receiver that he overthrew. Elway trying to hit Tolliver on a trick play. We talked about Elway and his trick plays. Now Jim Fossil, the offensive coordinator of the Cardinal, and Paul Wigan come up with one we haven't seen before. How about that one? There's Emil Harry, number 10. He is wide open. Of course, he's wide open to the point that John can't see him. It doesn't help a whole lot. He's down there. He'll go back and talk about it a little bit. But unfortunately, John couldn't see him. But John Elway, the key to that play is John Elway turned in a horrible play into a possible great play because he was under pressure and he made something happen. Incomplete pass. Second and 10, right at midfield. Tolliver, the man in motion. This is Elway. Right over the middle, open receiver, but it won't get much. That was Harry, gain of about four yards on the play. It'll be third and six at the 46-yard line. Scores of other games, Boston College 17, Clemson 17, and that's a final. There Steve. are no fair plays in college football. Clemson, <laughs> the team that won the national championship last year, now struggling a little bit. West Virginia, they beat Oklahoma last year. And last week, in fact, they killed Oklahoma. <laughs> They're on the winning streak. That's Two right. wins, right in a row. 
Maryland had a chance to win that one with a two-point conversion right at the end of the ball game and couldn't do it. Stanford four for nine in the third down conversion department. Play action. This is Elway trying to find a receiver. Tries to throw it backwards as Tolliver was covered by Gil Bird. And the intended receiver was Harry. Harry fell on his right shoulder, appears to have injured himself slightly. As Gil Bird, you never see those statistics, Steve, when the great cornerback covers a receiver to the point where you just simply can't throw to him. Tolliver was covered like a blanket by Gil Bird. Gil Bird, both the corners are excellent players for San Jose State. They have been challenged a couple of times today, though. They have not been uh, without error all day long. They have had their problems, too. This is the fifth punt for Greg Top. He's had punts of 28, 32, 44, and 36 yards. Kearse is back there all by himself. They're trying to block it. Good punt. <laughs> Good punt there. That'll be out of bounds at the... They're walking it back to about the 7 or 8. They're going to mark it at the 11-yard line. Fine punt by Top. He kept that ball away from Kearse. They don't want him handling that any more than he necessarily has to. Now, let's see. 3.48 left to go in the third quarter. If you're San Jose State right now, you're pinned deep. Don't make any mistakes. Ah. Tomorrow, the NFL Today kicks off a great day of doubleheader action. Check your local listings for the games in your area. Tomorrow, right here on CBS Sports. And I will be watching the 49ers and the Denver Broncos. How about you? Don't you like the Dallas Cowboys, though? I mean, you... Well, I'll especially be watching those guys. Cowboys. See the Seagulls? You don't see many of these in Oklahoma, do you? Not in Oklahoma, no. <laughs> no, the Cowboys. I'm in love with the Cowboys. They're close to home. They've got a tough uh, job with St. Louis. St. Louis trying to revamp the defense. It's under pressure right now. Dallas has had trouble in St. Louis. Little shuffle pass to Bobby Johnson. Johnson trying to find some room. He's got plenty of room. That was a big gainer as Johnson from the 11-yard line. That's the third time they've run that play today. Uh, the first play, it, first time they ran it, what, it was not very successful. The second time, it was incomplete, and that time they made a big gain out of it. Gain of 18. Right now, if you're San Jose, as I tried to start before I was interrupted, uh, Excuse me. what you try to do is go in there and uh, establish your offense, gain some confidence, and keep the ball away from Stanford for a while. Well, that was an 18-yarder that takes it out to the 24-yard line. Clarkson with wide receivers on the left. Another running play. A little bit uncharacteristic of San Jose. Two running plays in a row. Although, I guess you'd have to call that other one a pass, wouldn't you? Yes, it was a pass. It was a forward pass. Stop made by Maronic. Dave Maronic from Mission Viejo. Another Orange County lad. Big sophomore. Paul Wiggins says he's the thug of our defensive team, and he says it very respectfully. He's a tough guy. Johnson, three carries, 22 yards. Wide receiver Eric Richardson on the left, two wide receivers on the short side, on the far side of the field. Clarkson got a receiver. It's Richardson. He's got some room. Richardson up to midfield. Oh, the San Jose team can explode. They kind of lull you to sleep, and I really feel, Vaughn Williams, the coverage man, I really feel that Jack Elway runs those running plays to kind of put you to sleep, just tranquilize you a little bit, and then all of a sudden he comes back with something you haven't seen before, and look at Richardson with a pirouette move, huh? He really is. He's working on uh, Eric, uh, Eric Price over the side, but what he had, he had uh, one of the backs in motion against a linebacker, and he was just going to play whichever came open to his left, working one side of the field. Draw play. Up across midfield, Stanford gets, or uh, JS, San Jose State gets it into Stanford territory for the first time this half. Gain of about uh, two to three yards on the play. Near the conclusion of today's game, as well as every CBS NCAA football telecast this season, we will be selecting the Chevrolet most valuable players from each competing team. Chevrolet donates a $1,000 scholarship to the General Scholarship Fund of each MVP school to assist qualified students in all chosen academic disciplines. This is the 12th year of the Chevrolet Scholarship Program, and we at CBS Sports are delighted to be a part of such a beneficial activity. Flags all over the place as Carlson gets flushed out of the pocket. He is tripped up. I don't know that Bates hit him, number 86, but he chased him to the point where he couldn't maintain his balance, and Clarkson went down. And once again, Steve, I think we see a case of a quarterback who's upset by that flag being thrown right in his face. Well, it doesn't help. <laughs> to have it thrown. Of course, you're conscious. You're wondering what... Ah, it's against Stanford. That did help, as yeah. a matter of fact. See, you're, of course, you never know. never know. That's right. So you need to go ahead and run your play and try to not be conscious of what's happened because you may have a chance to make even a bigger play. And it's always good to have a situation where you've got a penalty against your opponent 
or you've got a big play to choose from. Steve, did you ever hear an official when he throws the flag to audibly call out the foul? Uh, as he threw the flag at yeah. him? Yeah. Oh. I mean, did, so that he might, so that you might have gotten some indication which no. way the call was going to go? No, of course, I think probably would be impossible to do that. But, uh, I've had a referee call me things before, but not necessarily say what the foul was. Well, with the penalty, it's second and three. The ball's on the Stanford 44. Four receivers Art King, the right of the field. Art King, yeah, the last guy goes in motion. Clarkson looking that way. He's got the uh, receiver, but the ball is batted up by Williams and intercepted by Grissom. And now we're going to get a personal foul. A foul will be called on Kearse for leg whipping. Uh -oh. And Kearse takes the official's flag and throws it away and immediately gets a shower of flags. And he'll be gone. A shower of flags. A very inopportune move by Tim Kearse, who has been such a principal performer in this contest. The ball was batted up by Williams, intercepted by Grissom. His second interception of the day. And then in making the stop, Tim Kearse leg whipped Grissom. A personal foul against the offense. Dead ball. I have unsportsmanlike conduct against the offense. Well, by the time, by the time the unsportsmanlike conduct was called. They were the defense. It was against San Jose and against that man right there, Tim Kearse. I know how he feels. Watch the play first. They're sending four receivers down the field. The ball is tipped up by Vaughn Williams, 45. It's caught by Grissom. That's not where the problem was. Right here, watch Kearse. He's frustrated. He knows that there was an opportunity for a big play. They were having a good drive, and he's frustrated, and he lost his cool. It happens. The matter of uh, how you express it is the problem, and that time, unfortunately, he expressed it by picking up the red flag and throwing it. We said Grissom had intercepted earlier today, and that one led to a Stanford touchdown. We'll see what happens this time. Cards up on top, 24-21, 1-10 remaining in the third. You can't lose your poise in this game. Elway, handoff to Hooper. This is Greg Hooper. Hooper, he might go all the way. With a little more speed, he could have made it. He finally chased down. Chased down by Kenny Thomas. Kenny Thomas, the PC2A sprint champion, runs the 100 meters in 10-2. Chased down Greg Hooper. Hooper was wide open with another little bit more speed. He would have taken it all the way. The gain is 46 yards by Hooper. Inside trap play, you've got your guard helping you out on the trap. Hooper breaks into the secondary. And really, you're thinking pass, pass, pass. And this is the way Stanford wants to run their football team. Use the pass to set up the run. It was a great executed trap play inside. Now Elway with the wide receivers to the left side. Elway looking to the right side. Trying to hit Dressel. Throws it away. Dressel was covered by Brian Hawkins. Number 32, a senior from Long Beach. Tuli Anu'u giving a little pressure. Here you see Chris Rose, number 62, a veteran offensive lineman. We really don't cover those offensive linemen enough. Steve, it's one of the injustices of football. Rose, 6'5", 260, senior from Little Silver, New Jersey. Plays alongside Dennis Engel, a senior you, from Santa Clara. They're appreciated, though. Especially by quarterbacks. I accept that. Elway, sprinting out, trying to find a receiver, covered tough try for that completion. Tolliver covered by Gil Bird, and Bird with that remarkable quickness and agility, covering up Tolliver once again. No percentage there. Elway threw it the only place he possibly could, down and away, just hoping for the best, but Tolliver had no chance. Yeah, he was hoping for something lucky to happen that particular play because he knew that he was running out and running to the sidelines, and he didn't have a run, and he had to throw it low and outside to protect from any type of interception. It'll be third, third and ten. The ball is at the 15. Timeout called by the Cards. Rather curious timeout that they would take one here because in this kind of a game, you never know when you might want to have one. San Jose did not have one left at the end of the first half when they really could have used it, Steve. Uh, I want to make one, as we look at John Elway talking to his coach and his offensive coaches, the, the play by Tim Kearse, it, it happens a lot. And sometimes people say, well, the kid has a, is a hot head or something like that. Tim Kearse is an intelligent young man. And just like anybody else, when things don't go right, he expresses it maybe in the wrong way. But he wants to win. He's a competitor. And that particular time, 
I like the way he expressed his anger, though. He picked up the flag and threw it. That would be just... I grabbed a referee one time, Bob. <laughs> I did. I Must have so been a real little referee. No, a defensive <laughs> tackle was beating me to death all day long. I finally got so frustrated. I went to the referee and grabbed him. He said, you see that? He said, yes, Mr. Davis. I did put the flag on my face mask. <laughs> did you wear it the rest of the day? No, I said, I'm sorry. He put 15 yards on me. You were watching Paul Wigan. To the left, you see Dick James. Jimmy Anderson, the other coach in there. Dick James coaching the offensive line just to John Elway's left. Jimmy Anderson coaches the running backs. Just a moment ago, you saw Cass Jackson, a fine player at San Jose a few years ago, now on the Stanford coaching staff. We talked about those coaches. Nebraska, Penn State, next Saturday, right here. Pacific time, 12.30. Make an appointment right now to be right with us right here on CBS. Tom Osborne may have one, may have the number one team in college football. He's got a tandem of tailbacks and Rozier and Craig, an outstanding quarterback in Turner Grill. They are a great, great player. And, of course, you know, Washington is number one, but Nebraska is sure feeling it out in the Midwest. They like to be there, too. Third and ten, the ball's on the 15. Elway has Tolliver in motion. Elway back to throw. He's got a wide open swing man. Overthrew Harry. He had Vincent White wide open on, and see Vincent puts his hands up, as you can see right there. Great camera work, guys. Vincent, wide open in the same kind of a route where he caught 11 passes last week against Purdue. Harry, a little disgusted, would like to have had that ball a little closer. I think John was a little fearful of the interception that time, Steve. Well, I tell you, you know, Harris has had a, Harry has had a great day today. He is such a talented there. You know, you've got so many different receivers to throw to, John has really got an advantage all year. If he can stay healthy and his team stay healthy, they're going to have a lot of fireworks offensively. Mark Harmon with a 46-yard field goal. Now a 32-yard attempt. It's a fake. This is Cottrell. He's a quarterback, and he can throw. Not this time. Covered well by San Jose. They did a good job of covering that time. LaCarter Washington, ever alert. The big defensive tackle. The junior from San Diego did a good job of covering up Cottrell last time. Cottrell, a quarterback, and he can throw. He's a good thrower. He really is. The junior. Uh, the thing is, it's a good call. A lot of people say, why didn't you go and get the field goal? Well, it only make them a six-point lead. And the way this ball game has gone in scoring, this is a pretty interesting call. If you get a first and ten, then you got another chance to get a touchdown and really get the margin out. So it's not a bad call. It's unfortunate it was a sloppy play and didn't work, but it's good effort. <laughs> in their possessions in this second half, and we're ticking off the seconds, 24 to be exact here in the third quarter. Clarkson, play action, open receiver, Kears with a fabulous catch. Absolutely incredible catch by Tim Kears. A one-hander under tight coverage. We were just going to say that the Spartans have started drives at the 20, the 13, the 11, and the 15. They have not enjoyed good field position here in the second half. Kears limps off. That's the way Tim Kears really is should handle his frustration. Come back and have a great play just like this. It's always well when you kind of embarrass yourself a little bit. Come right back and do something great. Watch this one-handed catch. Wow. Grab that ball, put it away, and get a good stick there by Williams. But he put the ball away and made the play. But he might have hurt his ankle, looks like. Yeah, they're working on it. There's... He's a tough guy, and I think he'll be back. 24-21. The Cardinal of Stanford up on top of the Spartans. We'll be right back. Sports coverage of today's game is sponsored by Toyota, who reminds you that it's a good feeling to buckle up for safety. GTE, a group of companies in telecommunications, electronics, lighting, and precision materials. And by Budweiser, for all you do, this Bud's for you. on the sidelines he's had that ankle taped right over his shoe as Clarkson hands off to Johnson and he is absolutely swamped Johnson Moronic is the first man to hit him there you see the ankle of Tim Kearse they taped that right over the shoe they didn't bother to take that shoe off and he doesn't appear to be limping boys had a good day he's caught five passes for 131 yards and two touchdowns and threw a pass himself for the first score of the game an 84 yarder to Tony Smith there he's limping a little bit. I bet he doesn't limp when he's in that pass route. Kearse is in the short slot. Taylor is also trips right. Clarkson, he's got a receiver out in front, and it's Richardson, barely overthrown. Richardson 
a step ahead of Darrell Grissom at about the 35 yard line. Ball barely overthrown. USC 28, Indiana 7. Little vengeance for the Trojans after their right. comeuppance in Florida. 17 and 9 lost to Florida last week. They've got to play this team, Oklahoma, next week in Norman. Oklahoma came back, rallied off of that West Virginia defeat. 29 to 8. Another Jerry Claiborne's probably got his problems at Kentucky. He doesn't have a whole lot to work with, but he's a fine coach. Great young quarterback down there at USC by the name of Sean Salisbury. You want to watch him. He has a three-year run at it at USC. Clarkson. Richardson with a great catch. Fights his way back inside and gets the ball over midfield. On the coverage was Vaughn Williams. Baird was there. Grissom was there. And Rodney Gilmore also came over to help out. A 19-yard gainer as Richardson really attracted a crowd, but a little late. Well, I tell you, what this throw? Clarkson, his coach, Jack Elway, says he's one of the top five quarterbacks in the country, and I mean, he just nails Eric Richardson. He does his circus catch in the corner, but that, he's throwing the ball 25, 30 yards on the line out there. That's a difficult throw. And the Spartans, with a touchdown, could get the lead back in this contest. Well, it was a difficult throw for me as a wishbone quarterback. Everybody's gone. Johnson went in motion. Wide receivers everywhere. He's got a receiver. It's Richardson again. He's tied up by Price. Short of the first down, gain of about eight yards. This is what they're trying to take advantage of. There's, there's uh, Richardson coming inside. He thought, maybe Clarkson thought for a minute he might pick up a linebacker, but the uh, safety came and got him and made the coverage. But they're always looking for who's got it. They're trying to get a mismatch, get a linebacker on a fast back or receiver. Get an advantage. Jack Elway, what a football coach he is. Richardson split wide to the right. Taylor inside him in a slot. Kearson a short slot. And timeout called by San Jose. Well, the Spartans want to be sure of what they're doing. They want to try to go ahead. 24-21 Cardinal will be back. And there you see the score in Stanford Stadium. Stanford 24, Spartans 21. Eric Richardson, the outstanding wide receiver, last year was the national JC leader in both receptions with 63 and touchdowns with 12 at Monterey Peninsula Junior College. He came up here to San Jose with Bobby Johnson. They tried the shuffle pass and very nearly lost it. That quick little flip and just about lost that one, although it would be, as you said before, Steve, very alertly, it would be nothing more than an incomplete pass. That's right. What they're trying to take advantage of is coming to the ball game. They felt like that Stanford was extremely uh, committed to being hard charging and trying to make something happen, really force the uh, forcing lane. There's crazy George trying to get this crowd wa uh, awake. <laughs> but uh, they're really trying to force those units, and they're trying to take advantage of maybe just split sprinting by somebody, making somebody miss them. Good work that time. One day I want to find Crazy George's hairdresser. Great catch. We talk about Richardson. Richardson does it again for the first down. 13-yard gainer, Richardson with a brilliant afternoon. Six catches for 72 yards. He is a dandy. If you're Stanford defense, you better stop him right here because it's 12.22 left to go in the football game. They've had the ball a long time. This is a long, sustaining drive, and you need to stop them right now and don't give them any hope and don't give them a score. First and 10 at the 32. You kind of have the feeling, Steve, in a close game, a game that's going to go down to the wire, Elway will pull some kind of a rabbit out of the hat. Which Elway? I'm talking about the old guys, yeah. i got to tell you what Paul Wiggins said this week. Clarkson overthrew Richardson, well overthrown that time. Looked like Price might have had a chance for the interception. You know, <laughs> Paul Wiggins during the week came up with a great comment on Elway's. Somebody said, aren't you going to be glad when this is over? And he says, yeah, I really will. And then he thought for a moment and he said, you know, I'm not sure I will at all. He says, I've still got the old guy to contend with and the young guy will be gone. <laughs> We don't want to say that disrespectfully about Jack Elway. He's not that old. He was a great assistant for Jim Sweeney up at Washington State for a number of years. Has a Washington background. Coached at Grays Harbor. Coached at Cal State Northridge. Had a great record down there before he came up to San Jose State. Timeout called again. Cardinal up on top 24-21. Stay with us. <laughs> Thank you. 
The San Jose State Spartans, who have second down and 10 at the 32, have had drives of 85 and 80 yards for touchdowns today. This one started on their own 15. That's in the same range. They've had pretty good luck from that distance. Clarkson, second and 10, looking for a receiver. He's got pressure. Little mix up on the pattern that time as Eric Price bumped Richardson, no call. Clarkson was decked. Let's take a look at Richardson and see what happened in a collision with Eric Price. Richardson, number 19, watch him go down the field. He's gonna come a little bit in, he's gonna jag back out, backside. I don't think it was so much his fault, Richardson's fault, as it was the pressure that Barris, number 80, the outside linebacker, put on young Steve Parkman. Good call, Steve. Five for 10 in third down conversions for the Spartans as they come up in a third and 10 situation. Ball still at the 32. Two wide receivers left. Clarkson once again, he's got a receiver. He's got a first down. He might have six. The Spartans lead it. yard drive this one matched up with that 85 this is the second one as you see Tim Kearse coming off 85 yard drive in 10 plays Spartans take the lead 28 24 Kearse I think is cramped Steve I don't think that's the ankle I think that's a cramp the result of the wrap this is around the side oh what a move by Williams that is the baseball player the other baseball player Kenny Williams from San Jose, the freshman. He signed a Major League Baseball contract with the White Sox for about the same amount of money as John Elway got from the Yankees in the range of $150,000. And look at Kenny. Is he an exciting freshman as he's chased by Brian Hawkins, number 32, with a little help from the kicker. That is Berg coming over to help out. San Jose State last week had problems against Oregon in that same situation in the kicking game. Made some mistakes. Elway. This is when Elway is at his best, when he has to try to get ahead. He kicks it out to Vincent White. Vincent, short of the first down, gets it up to the 45-yard line. There is Kearse. Nobody attending to him, so he must be all right. I'm sure that was a cramp, and whether they can work that cramp out of his leg, that'll be a question. But he did not limp on that pass route, and he made a tremendous effort to get right into the corner of the end zone. He knew what he was going for. He was going for a San Jose State lead, and he got it. The Spartans up on top, 28-24. What a contest. If you joined us late, you've missed a lot. But don't go anywhere, because there's an eternity left. 10.50 to be exact. Play action. Elway. Receiver was Moore. Over the head of Moore. Incomplete. Well, we have just a moment, and this is such a hectic ball game. I know, Steve, you joined me in thanking Athletic Director Andy Geiger, Sports Information Director Bob Rose, and Paul Wigan and his whole staff, along with San Jose Athletic Director Dave Adams, Sports Information Director Lawrence Finn, and Head Coach Jack Elway. They have been so generous with their time and understanding this week. We knew all the secrets. We knew that Kearse was going to throw. We knew that there was a throwback pass to Elway, and they told us everything they were doing, all their game plans. We really appreciate it, and we know you at home do, too. Elway, open receiver, Vincent White, first down. Woodburn dropping back off into pass coverage. And of course, this is where you create a problem. Virginia over James Madison, or, or James Madison over Virginia. Uh -oh. How about that one? 21-17. I wonder how my old pal Ken Willard feels about that. 
Kenny, longtime performer for the 49ers from the University of Virginia. Georgia Tech over the Citadel. Scores and highlights after the game, so don't go away. We know you're not going to. Elway, Vincent White jammed at the line of scrimmage. Green was there. Bobby Grant was there. Kenny Thomas also coming up. Thomas, a great corner and a great pass defender. He's also a great run defender, Steve. This is a situation late in the fourth quarter where both teams really stamina and, and just uh, being bearing down mentally and not making mental breakdowns or mental mistakes is really important in the ball game. Just how physically fit you are to play in this ball game in the latter part of the game and think and react. Second and 10 at the 35. Uh -oh. This is Harry. He's going to throw. There's the throwback pass we told you about. This is Elway. Look at the move. He's got a chance. John Elway into the throw. A fumble. Cockroft has the ball. John Kirk. Sherman Cockroft, number eight, came up with the football. I don't think they're going to give it to San Jose. First down card. Elway is down and hurt. Oh, what a jinx this game has been for John. In his freshman year, he was hurt. Last year, he played on one leg. Maybe he's just got the wind knocked out of him. Certainly, that's what we would hope for. If we can look at Jack Elway. Jack Elway, Coach Tipper. agonizing. Here's a, here's a situation. You know Jack Elway pulled at both sides. He took off his headset, and it was just kind of like a, a moment of desperation as he was looking at to see what happened because he saw John go down quickly. We had just thank the coaches, Paul Wigan and his staff, Jimmy Fossil, for letting us into their playbook, and we told you about that throwback pass, and we don't sooner mention it, Steve, than we get it right here. John Elway made a great juking move at about the 20-yard line, took the ball down to the 11, and let's see if we can get another look at it. John is up. I think he's okay. Here's John. Puts a good juke right here on this man. Now watch John. He's going to get in a crowd. John Elway needs to hit the turf right here. 48, he looked like Dirk Hunter Ellis that would put the stick on him. Ray Williams was also in on the primary stop. I think he might have landed on the football. Steve Cottrell, a junior from Northridge, will come into the game right now. And Cottrell, there's Tracy Jordan. <laughs> he doesn't like any part of that. Cottrell, boy, I wouldn't want to beat him anyway. He's an outstanding quarterback. Cottrell was 26 for 42 for 390 yards a year ago. Lots of talent here. He's got his man, Vincent White, inside the 10, inside the 5. He's the score! He'll score from the 10! booing from San Jose State and watch him complete a pass to Vincent White the touchdown. There's young Vincent. Steve, you said it a long time ago, whoever has the ball last is going to win this one, it looks like. Harmon to kick. It's good. 31 the Cardinal. 28 the Spartans. Oh, what a football game. I don't think we're overstating it, are we, Steve? I don't think so. <laughs> Just an average Saturday afternoon in Palo Alto. <laughs> 53 <laughs> yards. Watch this. Drop back. He's not as big as that way. Only 5'10", 185. But he hits Benson. Now watch Benson. He really shouldn't score right here. But watch him. Number three, Derek Bird tries to make a tackle. He good feet drive, good body motion, good lower body movement touch. Steve, I'm not so sure that Gil Bird was anxious, anxious to stick that broken hand into Vincent White that time. As you see Vincent, a little blood from his mouth, nothing serious. But I think Bird, with his injured, his broken right hand, really having trouble. We get word from the Stanford bench, Elway did in fact have the wind knocked out of him. He's okay, he can come back. 53 yard drive, six plays. It's always fun to score, be, be able to look at the sidelines and see your teammates react. <laughs> Let's not forget the 47 yard kickoff return by Kenny Williams. That kind of set the tempo for that drive. 
White has eight catches for 109 yards and two touchdowns. He came in leading the nation. I don't think he's going to drop back very much. The Spartans, they know what they want to do. Kenny Taylor, he's got pursuit. He's down at the 22. Tom Breal, a sophomore from Phoenix. John with a smile. We're glad to see that. And he's happy for Steve Cottrell, the two of them. You can't say there's a whole lot of competition for that quarterback position, but John talking to Jim Fossil upstairs, just a couple of booths removed from us, as a matter of fact. I'm sure Fossil is saying, how do you feel, kid? John gives you the answer right there with that big smile. John was afraid of his, his two sisters. His older sister is married to Jimmy Walsh, who's a coach on Jack Elway's staff. He says, I know I lost her. I got worried when I lost my twin sister, Bobby Johnson. And Janet Elway, what a lovely lady. Nobody knows where Janet is sitting today. I don't think we could find her. I don't think she wants anyone to find her. This is just a terrible time for her, especially when John goes down and she doesn't know what kind of shape he's in. And if she could see that picture right now, that would bring a smile to her face. Then she agonizes for her husband, Jack. 22 of 34 for 330, exactly almost to the yard, only three removed from what he had last week against Purdue. But he'll be back. Oh, that San Jose pass offense. Do they keep your attention? You don't want to stray for a minute. The receiver, the hit was made by Kevin Baird. The catch was made by Tony Smith. Tony Smith, it seems like a century ago that Tony Smith scored the game's first touchdown when he took that 84-yard pass from Tim Pierce. That seems like ancient history now, doesn't it, Steve? That's right. If you're San Jose right now, all you got to do, you got plenty of time. Don't hurry. Don't throw the stupid pass or in a bad area. Make sure you're going the high percentage type pass every time you throw it. Take advantage of what Stanford gives you, but don't force anything. You got time. Clarkson, man in motion. Nobody left at home. That's Johnson in motion. He dropped this time. Here comes Clarkson. He can run. He's got some strength. Up across the 40 to the 42. It'll be a gain of about four. Terry Jackson, number 67, pursued him and helped make the stop along with Matt Sutherland. Matt Sutherland, sophomore from Boise. Smith has caught three passes, two rather, for 97 yards. One, of course, was that 84-yard TD. 727 remaining, you see it right there. 31-28, Stanford up on top of the Spartans in a real thriller. Pierce is back in the game in the slot position. Clarkson, lots of traffic, can't get any room. He's chased down, gets up across the 45, possibly to the 46, where it will be third down and about two for the first down. This is a critical third down situation now for the Spartans. You gotta give a lot of credit to San Jose State. Two years ago, they played Baylor University down in Waco, Texas, and everybody in the stands was saying, where, where is San Jose? And those kids came out, beat Baylor thoroughly, came on back home, and I think they've established themselves. And, and this conference, the Pacific Coast Athletic Association Conference, has really played well, and they pulled off a big upset. So they're, they're for real. Six for 12 in the third down conversion department. Spartans along two yards. Reverse. This is Kearse. He's all right. He's got the first down. He's at midfield. Flag goes down late. Let's take a look at that flag. That flag was thrown right into the pile. Bergren, Wimmer, Bates are all there. Terry Jackson also there. A face mask, and they're going to walk off. That's the inadvertent face mask. That's the five-yard penalty. I think that's a good rule. It is a good rule. First down. First really? down. So they had the first down, but the five just gives a little That's frosting right. on the cake, Steve. The penalty here, we're seeing it right here, the penalty design, the change in the rule this year really gives the, the referees the, an opportunity, the officials the opportunity to make a judgment on the severity of the uh, crime, so to speak. And it is a very good rule this year. First and 10 at the 45. Clarkson once again. Clarkson swamped by Jackson. Jackson. Playing the game of his life here today. Three sacks of Clarkson today, and Jackson making the last three tackles in succession. He was I, the best defensive lineman in the East when he came out of there. He's a great player. He is a giant at 6'6 and 250, really coming into his own at the nose guard position. Most nose guards are not his height. He's 6'6, as you said. And 
Uh, he is an overbearing figure in the middle of the line. He and Jeff Petkovicius, the Spartan center, are going to know one another pretty well at the end of this day. Clarkson, blindside, tried to get it out to Nicholas, a relief valve. He was hit by Maronic and really put some pressure on him. Tonight on CBS, Walt Disney, the shootest. Boy, we got two shootists here. The shootest stars John Wayne. It's on at 8 o'clock. The CBS Saturday night movie. A couple of shootists right here by the name of L. Wayne Clarkson. Well, we really are seeing quite a... This will be certainly documented, this ball game. Another classic battle. So it goes on from 74, as we mentioned, the top of the ball game. The rivalry of this uh, two teams, it will continue one more year for sure. And Cottrell comes in for one play. All he does is throw a touchdown pass. Vincent White scores his third touchdown, the one that puts Stanford up on top. Clarkson. He threw it on the break, but he threw it wide of Richardson. Kevin Baird with a good job on the coverage. Clarkson was decimated that time. Pretty gutsy call by the defense because they came in very hard in a third and long situation. Watch this. You've got to hurry Steve Clarkson's throw a little bit. Bergen's going to put the pressure on him. The wall collapses. Oh, pretty good shot. Get some Excedrin or something. I got a headache already. <laughs> Varus, number 80, got there about the same time. Berg hunting now for the third time today. This is a beauty. It's going to fair catch it inside the 10. That's kind of interesting. A fair catch inside the 10. Stanford has it back. They lead 31-28, but there's a long way to go. 5-19 left. Stanford now takes over. This is the deepest point from which they've started a drive. And a little bit curious, Steve, fair catching inside the 10. That's something you often don't want to do. Take your chance on that ball going in there. Yeah, you need to have a sense of where you're at. Stanford's got it on the 8. They're going to try and run it out of there with Vincent White, running to the short side. White is going to be pulled down by the nose guard, Jesse Green. Number 99, Jesse, senior from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. We have not seen McEnroe today. James Rowley has been at that position most of the afternoon. You don't know how depressing that is for me to look and oh see boy. those guys in one afternoon <laughs> put more yards in the air than I had my entire senior year in 12 games. But let me tell you, Boomer Sooner, you quarterback those Sooners to 32 victories, and I can only think of one or two other guys that ever did that in their career. I know, but I wanted God to make me 6'3", so I could throw. <laughs> Outside to the fullback, Moore. It'll be close to the first down. This will bring up a rather critical play for Stanford possession. Gain of eight yards on the play. Ball is out at the 17-yard line. And it'll be third and two or three, depending on where they ultimately put it. Stanford is five for 12 in the third down conversion department. Spartans trying desperately to hold here. Would Elway dare put the ball up in the air? What do you think? Not this time. Oh, a fumble. Spartans have it in the air. The Spartans have it in the air. Hunter Ellis came up with the ball in the air. I do believe that he got it in the air. I don't think the ball even bounced. Oh, the crowd going crazy. Those San Jose Rooters are absolutely berserk. That ball was recovered by Dirk Hunter Ellis, a senior from Tacoma. He intercepted it in the air, and he very nearly took it into the end zone. Watch Vincent White. He's going to get this. He really, you know, it's blur. There's Dirk, Dirk Hunter Ellis, number 48, is going to recover. He was finally brought down by Greg Hooper. It looked like somebody just came by and kind of stripped him of the ball. This game is hanging in the balance right now, sports fans. Clarkson. Bobby Johnson straight ahead, second effort to the two or three. Bobby Johnson, not known as a tough inside runner, but he looked pretty tough that time. Johnson came up from Monterey Peninsula Junior College with Eric Richardson, and they have really added something to this Spartan team. Jack Elway was looking for something once Gerald Wilhite left. When you lose someone who catches 50 passes and gains over 1,000 yards on the ground, he's going to be tough to replace. Johnson and Richardson are combining to do that. Taylor and Inglis Inglisius is in there now. Clarkson, touchdown, Spartans. The Spartans are up on top again.
I think they'll be talking about this one for years. Clarkson went right behind his right guard, Tom Larson, on the sneak for the touchdown. Berg. He's perfect for the day. 35, 31. Spartans up on top again, but a long way to go. 352. Oh, Steve. Tom Larson, number 65, the right guard, really helped seal it off. Also, the center. Clarkson's able to just walk right on in for the touchdown. Let's see if we can see it from a different angle, maybe right here. Watch him. He's just going to read off the guard, go right off the backside of Larson and nobody's there. They're thinking outside. They're afraid that they're going to put something on the outside in the pass or possibly a pitch play or a trap. They're thinking outside, and Clarkson goes in the middle. I think Jack Elway just outguessed him. Matt Soderlund, the offside linebacker, took a shot at Clarkson, but that was way too late. Too late. They didn't have Larson covered. They didn't have him mirrored at the line of scrimmage. Clarkson just walked it in. But I'll tell you what, 352 is a long, long time for John Elway. What a tough, tough turnover for Vincent White and Stanford. Deep in their territory, you got to think, protect the ball, don't make mistakes. That's what the coaches are, are, are trying to stress to the players. Don't do anything silly. Hang on to the ball, protect it, and they turn it over. That's uh, frustrating, obviously. Now it's the test of Stanford, John Elway, and everybody to come back. They're probably not going to get great field position here and try to make something happen. they got plenty of time. And don't forget that the very alert fumble recovery by Dirk Hunter Ellis, a senior from Tacoma, set that one up. Berg comes forward. Williams is deep. He will not return this one. So, Elway at the 20-yard line. 3.52 remaining. And I'll tell you, when you get the lead in this game, Steve, you don't want too much time on the clock. That's right. The problem is you don't want to score too quickly either because Stanford has the ability to go 80 yards rather quickly and you do not want to get the score and give it back to them if you can sustain it, eat up a lot of the clock, and get the ball on the other end of the field if you're going to turn it over if you, at all. I got a great statistic for you in a minute. Elway coming out of the shotgun. They got White split wide left. Harry in the slot trying to find Harry. He's looking for Harry. He fell down. He's got an alternate receiver. It's White. White on a great catch. Unbelievable catch by White. stadium is going crazy. Watch why he's down at the bottom. He's just looking to lay. There he is. He's on 45 Williams. What's the great catch? What a great a silence your what a way to silence your critics. If you make a mistake, you fumble, you do something that kind of embarrass you and hurts your pride, then come back with a great play. That's the compliment. That's the kind of athlete they have at Stanford. That's the nation's leading receiver right there. What a play. Oh Elway is obviously all right. He's got White again. Great defensive play by Kenny Thomas. Flag on the play. Kenny Thomas on the coverage. When San Jose scored moments ago, that was the third time today that they had scored in less than one minute. The first touchdown came. First one ball, defense. Uh-oh. Tough penalty. Automatic first down is right. Jack Gatto, the referee. Let's take a look and see if we can pick this up. Boy, the, the game today is you've got to keep your poise. It's so hard for a youngster to keep his poise over the ball game. Let's watch. The, it looks like a spear, a light hit. It all comes from the left part of your screen there. Where is it? Not there yet. I think it was that player coming in from Maybe the right 51. side, Steve. The first touchdown San Jose scored was 45 seconds. Then they had this last one of 39 seconds, and they had one of 12 seconds. So when they've done it, they've done it quickly and explosively. Keep your poise, everybody. 26-yard line, first and 10. Elway, shotgun. Looking for Tolliver. He's got Harry wide open. He missed it. Too much pressure. Kerry Ford there. Bob Massini also there. Tuli Enu'u. Jack Elway saying, okay, guys, we need a little bit more of that. Here's John. This time they do have a blitz on, but they picked up the linebackers that were blitzing. What's this? John Elliott's going to get the pressure. A new who? There he makes the tackle by that. It's going to be second and long. We'll be right back. On 
your screen. A real epic in this part of the country, Crazy George from San Jose State. There have been some interesting people go to San Jose State. He's just one of them. <laughs> I'll tell you about some others if we have time. The Smothers Brothers went to San Jose State. Elway. Elway dropped behind the line of scrimmage. Number 99, Jesse Green, has played his heart out here today. Let's take a look, Steve. There's Harry, number 10. He gets pushed and shoved a little bit outside, which is all fair and legal. That caused the tempo a little bit. Of course, John got a lot of pressure. Jesse Green, quickness is his key at the nose guard position. And really, he's been double teamed most of the day, but that time he got some pressure on John Elway and made the tackle. Fifth sack on Elway. Ball is at the 43-yard line. It is third and 27. No field goal from this part of the field. Elway. Too much time. That San Jose defense is really playing some football now. Jesse Green, Bobby Grant, James Rowley, they have really done a job. And I'll tell you who really made that play, the San Jose secondary. Thomas and Bird, Ellis, Hawkins, Cockrum, Williams, they had those receivers covered. 35, 31, 131 left. Fourth down situation for Stanford. Stay right here. still here we have not gone anywhere <laughs> we are just stunned that's all <laughs> 131 a long way from being over one of the things that you've got to think right now that they're going over in their mind it's fourth and a mile well and another thing you've got to think about steve no timeouts left for stanford remember they used those timeouts early san jose has one left they don't want any timeouts they want that clock to motor 131 left this is a difficult call, obviously, because you hate to turn the ball over, but I wonder, really, if you don't gain a little bit of advantage, there are two sides. One, you're afraid to give it to San Jose State. They've moved the ball well. That's for granted. The other thing is you punt them and keep them deep and maybe hope your defense makes a big play because it, these are impossible odds right here you're working with on fourth and long. So the possibility is you're going to turn the ball over to them deep in your own territory, at least at midfield, where you have a chance to pin them back deep and at least hope for something to happen. They held them up again. The clock kind of messed Fourth up. Fourth down and 35 yards to go. What kind of a do or die situation. What well, the odds on a fourth and 35? For the average guy, not so good. With Elway at the controls. The and what does this do? What does this loss do? Going back to our story and the way we started today, what does a loss here do to John Elway's Heisman Trophy chances? We'll get to that in a moment as they start the clock. Throw it deep and let them intercept it deep. Play action. Elway. Everybody covered. He's got trouble. He's going to scramble. Boy, they've got a lot of defensive backs back there. Elway not over the line of scrimmage. Elway is still alive. He's back. He was over the line of scrimmage. I think he went backwards. And he is finally stopped. I thought he crossed the line of scrimmage. Number 97, LaCarter Washington. Number 49, Bobby Grant. Number 90, James Rowley. And the question now, after the seventh sack of Elway, can Jack Elway and his Spartans chew up a minute and 23 seconds on the clock? You have to say they can do that. San Jose State has never, I repeat, never defeated Stanford twice in a row. And they have only won five games in the 38 games that have been played since the year 1900. They are on the threshold of winning their second consecutive game right here over the Cardinal in Stanford Stadium. They're just going to let the clock run. The Cardinal, those Stanford players, 
ejected now. There's nothing they can do but turn around and watch the clock tick off. 112, 111, 110, 19. And what it's ticking off for Paul Wigan and his staff and his players today, a Stanford loss. And you don't want to lose to San Jose State before you go to a place called Columbus, Ohio, and take on a team called the Ohio State Buckeyes. Right. Paul Wigan will think a long time about that call. I understand both sides of the argument. And, of course, hindsight you can use right now, but that was a difficult call to make as a coach. 46 seconds. Clarkson not thinking about any records. Look at the smile on the face of Jack Elway. And look at the contrasting expression on the face of Paul Wigan. These San Jose players are ecstatic. The San Jose rooting section, thousands of them, all on their feet. Coach Jack Elway. Is he our nomination for Coach of the Year two games into the season? It's ticking down. There will not be another play. Ten seconds. Seven. Paul Wigan dejected across the way. Jack Elway ecstatic on this side of the field. It's over. Twice in a row. San Jose over Stanford. And we have seen a whale of a football game. Jack Elway, a real gentleman, a fun guy to be with, a great football coach. There has been so much pride and love and respect shared by Jack and his son John and the way they've handled all the media hype and all the attention has been a real inspiration for all of us who have been close to them. Heads held high. And he'll seek out his son, John. You can be sure of that. The boy in that crowd is father, son, now son, coach, and player. The Spartan football team is coming over to their rooting section. And those Spartan fans are going crazy. Almost to a man, the San Jose players have come over to join with the San Jose State band. And they are saluting the rooting section. San Jose State has been in school since the last week of August. Classes have not yet started at Stanford. 35-31. That one will be etched in the memories of San Jose State fans for years to come. And now back to your, back to your other storyline, and we'll get back to it. 35-31. The Spartans have won it here at Stanford Stadium. John Elway, the Heisman Trophy candidate for the cards. You can't stay away from him. Although Vincent White had a great day, too. Tim Kearse, who caught passes for three touchdowns and threw for another one. There is Timmy Kearse. The fumble, the Vincent White fumble, is the one that started it. Started the Spartans on their road to victory here in the closing moments of this game. Spartan fans still playing in front of the rooting section. Let's see if we can see. I think Chris Rose, the offensive lineman, hit him right here the play of the game right there because they're pinned deep in their territory. There's Dirk Hunter, uh, Ellis, that gets the ball in midair and makes the play. Vincent White had the ball stripped from him, and that was the key. It turned the ball over. It gave them excellent opportunity. There's Dirk, Dirk Hunter Ellis, the young man that was lucky. Having a second look at that, I think that was Jim Clymer. Let's take a look at Clarkson and Larson right here. Take some lucky breaks in this football game. What the uh, Clarkson now, he's just going to sneak across. The good block down side, inside by Larson, and all Steve Clarkson has to do is just jump in the end zone in the touchdown. It takes luck in a football game oftentimes, and that's what happened on the fumble, and that's what made it happen. We've got a heck of a game, or had one, 31-35, Spartans won it. We'll be right back for a little bit more. The Chevrolet most valuable player from uh, Stanford, John Elway, with 23 of 37, 379 yards and two touchdowns. And Tim Kearse, the great player for the San Jose State Spartans, has just done a fabulous job. A check in the amount of $1,000 will be donate, donated by Chevrolet, the each school's general scholarship fund, to further assist students in all chosen fields of academic endeavor. And that tells the story, the blue and gold of San Jose State here today. The 
executive producer of NCAA Sports is Kevin O'Malley. Today's coverage of the Stanford San Jose State game was produced by Don McGuire. Directed by John McDonough. Associate producer, Rich Nelson. Field technical manager, Phil Wilson. Technical director, Jay Fairman. Audio, Charles Weeks. Broadcast associate, John Connell. And nice going, guys. A great job. Tomorrow, be sure to join CBS Sports for the NFL Today. Immediately followed by our NFL doubleheader. Check local listings for game and time in your area. Once again, the final score today. San Jose State, two wins in a row over the Cardinal. 35-31 today. This has been a CBS Sports presentation.